Okay, with it being after seven o'clock, we will call the uh, May 20th, uh, excuse me, June 13th meeting to order. We'll start off with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. First order of business is the minutes have been read and reviewed and looking for a vote. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? That's unanimous. First order of business is an RDA 35. Actually, I just oh, I'm want sorry, to I'm sorry. Out, I just want to shout out to Regina Keene and to Chris Noble, who are members of the Board of Selectmen. I had um, an opportunity to meet them last week, and um, we had a very good conversation. So hope you guys are watching. Okay. Very good. Very good. Well done. And first order of business is 35 Dale Street. coming for this one I, um, but you have the la the final review letter in your packets for this um, he had recommended you know choosing a different location for the pool um, for reorienting the pool and the applicant provided things to the to dispute you know the rationale for doing that so ultimately, the pool will stay in the same place, and his, his comments basically came to tree removal. Um, he re recommended more pruning and less removal. I think we had already talked about that there were a lot of um, bigger trees out there that they didn't want overhanging the pool, and that he would um, leave the saplings that are growing out there and remove the bigger trees. He also recommends no grading on the back side of that pool um, with anything steeper than two to one and that the pool filter be located as far from the um, resource area as possible on the western or north side of the property. Um, and the final comment, there's a pool maintenance plan that was submitted that talks about draining the pool and dechlorinating the pool before draining, but in general, you've never allowed pools to be drained that close to resource areas, especially when they're adjacent or in the watershed. So I think we've always put conditions in there that the, the t water would need to be trucked out if they ever needed to fully drain the pool. Um, but outside of those things, you know, I think this is ready to close and close an issue. The planning board is also drafting a decision and we'll have the opportunity to compare notes on that. No, no questions, just uh, just to emphasize if we're gonna be writing the order of conditions, uh, that condition where it's contrary to their written O&M plan that makes sure it's memorialized. And I'm almost hanging on that we ask them to modify their O&M plan so at least it strikes that or it echoes what we would say so they at least are consistent. I would hate to have documents Well, we could have a pre-construction -con pre condition that requires them, them to, to modify it. Right. That's all I have. No. So this is an IDA, not, no. not, not an NOI, right? Right. So but but we'll have a pre-construction. We're very limited to what we can condition. Not so. really. I mean, if we're saying you need to submit a new O&M prior. It's actually better to get it through a new O&M because at least it's in that document. Oh, right. I'm sorry. I, won't, I'll, I mean, I'll be drafting and issuing a negative determination, but the planning board's going to have a full-on um, watershed special permit, so I can let them know our condition and hopefully they can mirror it as well and we'll both get a new O&M prior to construction. But with an RDA, we can we can assign three conditions, is that correct? There's no limit. I'm Rule of thumb, but once you get beyond it's, three, the, yeah, the rule is what you're really talking about here. Okay. We generally if issue between if it, if we, it, if it needs than, more than that, if it's that complicated, it probably should never have been an RDA in the first place. Right. And if, it's, if it is simple enough, then... It's an above ground pool. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. so. Okay, I'm all set. Thank you. All set. Motion. What are you looking for, Jen? A negative what? Negative uh, number three. Um, I, yeah, I don't know what I was saying. Draft for the next meeting. I think it was an NOI. It's a negative um, number three with pre and post construction inspection and a requirement to modify the O&M to have pool drainage um, 
if, if full drainage is required, it would be to a truck. Um, in the requirement for, it's in the filing, but I think we should put it in there that it's the cartridge style non-backwashing filter. I, I just have a question, Jen. Um, it's still out, outstanding with planning. And no, they're, dra they're drafting their order. Oh, they are drafting yep. an order? Okay. I'll move as recommended. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And that's unanimous. Um, next one is um, uh, 707 Turnpike Street. So you have a revised plan in front of you. Showing the dewatering pit across the street as well as erosion controls. And, um, oh, you were here. I'm yeah. sorry. I <laughs> it went so fast you didn't hear me. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome. Always best to remain silent. <laughs> asking for a confirmation of the wetland line on this. Across the street, the wetland line came from a prior addition project they did a few years ago, and this is just an estimate. But it's just to, to put on the record that the resource areas are there. And with that, I'll turn it over to TJ. Uh, so my name is TJ Melvin with Christensen and Sergi, here on behalf of the applicant for the project at 707 Turnpike Street. Uh, at the last meeting, <clears throat> uh, we had discussed adding a receiving pit on the opposite side of 114. Uh, so we've added a 10 by 10 um, pit right along the side of the manhole to be able to receive the directional drilling. Uh, we also added a dewatering area uh, to be able to dewater that pit as needed. Uh, we added siltation controls around at the limit of the work on the opposite side of Turnpike Street. Um, and as Jen had mentioned, we showed some approximate offsets to the possible wetlands across the street. Um, and you can see the setbacks have been added to the plan as well. Um, and I'm willing to answer any additional comments the commission may have. Uh, I think the filing information is accurate enough. Jen, you had sent an email off this afternoon. I answered it, but it was late. You probably not so have seen you it. you also asked about the, the work needing permission of the owner. Um, the, the sewer department, um, the, the DPW didn't have any concerns about the ability to connect to the manhole. They just said, but, you know, I'm that's saying what, what it shows on the plan here. So we have a standard condition right in the preamble to all of us that this doesn't grant any other rights beyond the condition, the uh, what was protected act itself. So it, it, I think it goes so far as to talk about any property rights or ownership rights. So I just want to make sure that that condition is, when we go to review it, is, you know, it's pretty clear. Well, this uh, is, again, a negative determination to do this work. Uh, I mean, we could put it in there that just that, we're not granting work, the ability to do work on any other property but the Fair subject enough. property. That's all we need, yeah. This, probably, this wasn't an on-the-ground survey on that side of the street anyway. That's all just assessors information? Yeah, yeah, the majority so it, of it is, yeah. It, it's only as accurate as the assessors maps are. I'm not too worried about it. All set. I'm satisfied. I have no questions. Uh, I have a main uh, question. Uh, the watering pit, uh, we had discussed about the water table in that area, mm -hmm. which is really high. Mm -hmm. And uh, you said that the, the, uh, drilling, the driller was going to be five feet down. Yes. Clearly, they'll be in the water table. Yep. Um, I have concern that the dewatering detail that you supplied mm -hmm. is not going to be sufficient to uh, to pump the water. And, and there's wetlands on both sides of this uh, area across the street. One of them is a brook. I believe that's Boston Brook, right? Down along 114? The, the Boston Brook's a little further down. The, 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 a little the, further down. But, but there's beaver 
there's beam of retention where yeah. that water is. Mm -hmm. the, you're right. You're right. Uh, I think they're out. I think they're on the outer edge of the outer riparian zone. But you're right. That is a brook. Um, but it's, it, I think it's more than 200 feet, right? Yes. What, I, what looks like the main channel is a little over 200 feet away. Well, my problem is, is that if they pump, if they have to pump because the, yeah. the dewatering hole is not yeah. going to be sufficient, yeah. that water is going to go into the wetlands. Now, if it's going to be filled with silt from drilling and, and uh, working around that manhole. Mm. I have a problem with the dewatering pit, which is only two feet deep. Mm. That, I don't think that's sufficient. So, okay. You being, you being the engineer, Val, uh, Joe, what do you think? There's a, there's a dewatering sketch on your well, plan. If it was an NOI, I'd be more comfortable with getting conditions in to protect it. But you're absolutely right. Uh, we're at the mercy of best practice out there. and. The truth is, they're going to have to get down below whatever elevation they're going to be advancing the, the directional drill from. So they're going to be down at least five, if not six feet. Um, so the pit's going to be that much deeper, and it's almost going to be that you have to you have to shore it and hold the water out, because I don't think you can pump it fast enough because right. it's going to be pouring in so fast. It's going to be pouring in. Um, so now we're famous for giving conditions that simply hold them to a standard: thou shalt not discharge silty water. What does that really mean when you get in there and, and it's the, your bank's deciding to cave in? Well, I'm, I'm of the, of the uh, opinion that if the dewatering uh, detail is not sufficient, that they should have to use a frac, frac tank. I know it's an expense, but both sides of that row, both sides of this project are, are, are wetlands. They could, they could uh, collect some serious silt while they're trying to, you know, tie into the sewer. Um, but I, I'm, I'm in fit, whatever the commission wants to do, but I, I, I'm very uncomfortable with the, uh, with a two foot hole with stone in it, uh, where the water table is clearly, it might, that even that might hit the water table. If you get to the, ex the extent of the cost of a frac tank, you're almost better off just advancing, you know, sheet, sheeting, metal sheeting down, sheet piling, if you will. Mm -hmm. Push it down and get it down below your water work area. Well, just basically isolated. use it as a coffin dam because yeah. then, then what's coming in is just minimal. And then you don't have to worry about what you're pumping or how clean it is. Uh, that's actually cheaper than no, <laughs> bringing I, a frac I, tank in. Like I said, I, whatever whatever the best practice is, is fine. But I don't think it, that the water pit, as designed according to this plan, is sufficient enough to uh, take care of the water. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Time of year. Depending on when they do it now. Um, I don't think that dries out over there. Not six feet down. Not six feet down. Or five feet down. There's a dramatic change in that what you see in the picture from April to July or That's August. That's on the surface. But down below, I don't think it dries out. No. I would agree with Louie. Okay. The old meadows that were out there were always... Always swampy, always year round. Yeah. The whole back end of Willow. I mean, Willow I'm Street. not trying to generate revenue from anybody. Sewer, but there is sewer out there, and it is a sewer repair. I it, mean, we have you know, subject, yeah, subject replacement, right? Yeah. So with, I mean, that's what, that's what we that's what we had the sewer run down that road in the first place for, because the, these areas weren't suitable for septic, because of their proximity to the resource area. So it's a kind of a pick your poison right here. Um, what would you rather do? So let's take Louis' line of thought here. We're not arguing the, the appropriateness of bringing the sewer in. We're not arguing whether it should be an RDA or not. But because it's an RDA, all of the information has to be on the plants. It has to be sufficient. So what Louis is saying, and, and I don't disagree, is what is shown here is inadequate. So we should ask them to show a dewatering mechanism that's more adequate. And then we can still issue an RDA. Well, probably yeah. should be an actual determination of where the water table is at this time of year, so you know for, for a fact where it is. We're not just guessing that it's going to be high. And then have them design a system that's going to work with in that condition. TJ, right? Yeah. It's um. What you, do you have experience with, with sheeting, metal sheeting? Uh, no. Yeah. So you can get it pretty. You just vibrate it in. Mm -hmm. And once you get it down in and you lock the corners in, yep. that creates a coffer dam, then you can excavate everything else in it. If you get if you just simply put a detail that shows sheet piling being used, 
and surround that area and get it down below your work zone. Mm -hmm. Don't need water table, don't need testing, it just simply shows a coffin dam driven below the work area. Okay. Still with a dewatering pit. Oh, yeah. That is, yeah. yeah. Right. A, a, a separate. A treatment area to yeah, treat, discharge. Yeah, yeah, a treatment yeah. area. That wouldn't be in lieu of, that would be in addition to it. Right. Um, yeah. Like I said, I mean, it, it, to me, I think there's going to be a lot of water. I mean, they're going to start, they're going to fight water from, from across the street, and the water's going to follow them to the other side. Um, and and then the, once they start digging that 10 by 10 work area, they're going to really hit some water. So uh, that's, I just think that we need more than what they're showing. Um, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't care how they do it. I agree with you with the, with the sheathing. It was probably the cheapest way. Uh, and but in I, detail, he doesn't have to analyze. He just gets it down there below enough and we... And we could include it in, yeah. in and like an Doug, like Doug said, we got to find out what the water table is. Do we? If we if no, we no. advance the sheeting down below, say two feet below the work work zone? Yeah. No, probably. Well, we don't need to because no, because it'll never work its way up and around it. We we know we know that the this is the lowest section in town. It's like almost at sea level. We know that from years of permitting projects on this road. Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody on that corridor. Is it's all it's a water problem everywhere you go. Okay. It just is. Deb, are you all ready? the way to Sharpness Pond Road. Do you have any suggestions? I do not have any Doug, suggestions. Are you comfortable with the sheathing and the? Well, I don't know. It would seem to me that it would be helpful for them to know what what they're dealing with, know the facts, know where the water table is, because as, as the summer goes along, the water table should start to drop. But I don't know if it would drop enough to uh, there would be a time of year where you best to do the work uh, or what. But, uh, so, TJ, you, you, in working for this client, did this start out as a septic system replacement or did you know it was not going to work and you didn't even uh, didn't even bother looking at test pits? No, the, this was actually seen as a cheaper alternative. Um, if we have to, we will go I would say, go you, you, maybe you already have that data, but, but you know, you, you abandoned that right no. from the get-go. Yeah, they, they thought this would be cheaper just because the restrictions and how tight the front of the site is. Yeah, well, they had a the system on the front of the site isn't that old and it failed mm -hmm. I think was the issue so I don't think relocating one that's the only place they can put one is in the front yard of that site yeah no I'm only helpful. asking the question to help answer Doug's question maybe if they had done test but if they had considered that alternative first yeah, that they might have already that have that data they don't well, make this is the best alternative that reinforced my what I said before oh, we know where the water the septic yeah. system failed because it's probably in groundwater it's, it's shallow up there. Yeah. yeah. So to go down five or six feet, you're going to be in some serious so, water. So let's give TJ his marching orders. Okay. So, so you comfortable with the sheathing? I don't want to cut Doug's legs Doug, off. Doug wants. Doug wants. Uh, no, I mean the sheathing. Just seems to me you're better off having the facts when you when you when you decide something. So both. And then you can put your sheeting in or whatever other method you come up with that deals with it. But we should have all that information on the plan so that we we know the facts before you start out. Yeah, especially so Otherwise, you should go to a notice of intent and, I, I agree. and a do all that information. A, t a test pit net on the opposite side of the road would be helpful. Would, uh, would a hand auger be okay just to get water elevation? Just but not like a full test pit with the machine, just hand dug, is that acceptable? Just so you're going to need to know, we're not concerned about seasonal high water, so we're not looking for modeling, because yeah, we know just, where that is. Yeah, it's just, just digging could down be inches below the surface. We're looking to know where, yep. in fact, you're not going to get it. You're not going to get it other than the modeling layer at the top. You just have to, you'll know where it is at that day you did, that you either do a boring or dig it. Right, but the, the, the soil should tell you where the, It'll tell you where seasonal high is, but also where actual water is. You, you know, you should have full. You, you'll be out of modeling and into um, glade. <laughs> but you won't know how low does it ever extend at the, at the low level. Uh -oh. That you won't right, know. Right. So that's not going to. That's not going to determine how deep you need to have your dewatering pit. Yeah, it would only let us know where it is. By the time you do all that analysis. No. Drive, the, just drive the sheets in. Drive the sheets in and just be done with it. Get it two. Get it two feet below your work zone, and, and that's enough. Okay. 
any other comment? To you, just, you, just you do that, just coordinate with, that? with the director of drill, because he's going to need, gonna need that back uh, area. I'd like to get the I'm sure yeah. they're going to deal with the problem. Whatever they come up with, they'll come up with a solution for it. And then so the, whatever, whatever they have to do, they'll do. Yeah. I, I, well, we should get some type of deep. How far yeah, they put the sheeting down and that doesn't I, I work, then they they'll do something else. I think they should go down and see how far the, the, the regular water table is. Well, because. Well, they don't, they, but the issue is they don't, they only need, on the day they're working, they need to go two feet below where they're going to drill across. Right. It doesn't really matter where the water table is. This is just, this is just a sewer, and it's the only alternative they have. I know, but if they're pumping, pumping. Like, but that's like that's the purpose of the sheathing. Where's it going to go? Pump. Right. It's going to go. It's kind of seat of the pants engineering. If you were out there, you had real soft bottom and you had soft sides and you had water coming in, you would try to hold that back, and you could go through all the analysis and all the borings and everything ahead of time and, and know how to do that precisely. Or you could simply say, "Don't waste all that upfront money. Just put the sheathing in. Get down below your work zone." Keep, so, that'll keep the water out. So what, with a little bit that comes in, you, that that you can pump and handle because it's going to be just, just, just get it done. Water that comes up. Yeah, whatever comes up, that you pump. You should be able to That's going to be minimal. Yeah. yeah. Can you explain the? So it's a two fifth hole with stone in it with um, a filter bag in it. Yes. I mean, we could also have him, um, you know, dig the two foot hole. We could also line that with hay bales, silt fence, fill it with stone, and you know, just give it more ways to get rid of the fines um, as they're doing it too, in addition to the sheathing. But that way, anything that comes out of it is going to get, mm -hmm. just kind of beef up your, um, TJ, beef up your detail to include, you know, Hay bales some, around it as well. And like a hay bale ring, yep. filter fabric and stone. The the work on the opposite side of the street will be relatively quick. It's, it's almost like irrigation piping that's going to be going through, and they're just going to tap into the side of the manhole, and that's that's it. So that it shouldn't be open too long. It shouldn't be a long process. Um, so it shouldn't be like a multiple day type of ordeal. Um, but it should it should just be quick because it really is just that pipe coming through and tapping into the side of the manhole. The rest of the connections will be done inside. Um, do, do, do good planning, TJ, and it will be a one day job. Yeah. That should be. Uh, like I said, Mike, I'm not trying to mm -hmm. be a pain, but I just I'm just not comfortable with the. Uh, because I know how wet it is out there, and it is very wet. And uh, you're going down five, six feet, you're going to see. Well, they've had, there's, they had a, just had a sewer main break out there right in front of uh, Mr. McGregor's property this spring. And, um, you know, again, they, they dug one day fix. There wasn't massive washout or huge. I mean, if, he, if the, the work is really short, I, I don't right. anticipate it's well, going to be a I lot agree. of water. I, I just, would be more comfortable. I don't want like, I don't want to get an after the fact that all oh, the the water pit wouldn't hold the water, or we couldn't keep up with it, and all the silt went into that wetland or the brook. Um, we're trying, that that's why we're here. Um, so like Joe says, if you want to do the sheathing, and 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 uh, increase the, the uh, stone and, and the hay bales and the silt fence around the the watering pit, I guess that's the best we're going to get out of it. Sean, how about you? Have any input? <clears throat> I don't. I walked into the meeting late. And, uh, I guess you have a right. direction of focus, so I'm staying out. Right. Uh, so, so just, so oh, sorry, just to clarify, do you want us to do a couple handholds to get a water elevation, or do you not think that it's necessary? You're going to do the sheathing, correct? I'm not sure it's going to be adequate. Okay. You, the information you're going to confirm is going to can give everything a bit of value. Yeah, yeah. Unless for some reason it was down deep enough, but I don't, I don't think that it will be either. So I mean, you're going to hit water as soon as you start. Yeah, it's a pretty and then, and then low lying area. Then you're so. you probably hit a dry spell. So that, so like you say, it's not going to be accurate. Uh, and then hit another, another wet spot, the, the actual groundwater. So I don't, I don't, uh, I don't think the the uh, a, te a regular full fledged test pit might help. But we'll go. I'll go with. I'll be willing to bend with the sheathing and the. Uh, Increasing of the deep water a bit. Doug, how are you comfortable with that? Yeah, I mean, they're going to end up doing whatever they it's have them. to do. They, they have to do it, so uh, at least we get some protection. That better than what we had. So we need a motion. 
Motion to continue. You are you gonna get? You want to see? He's gotta come plan? back, right? Yeah, you gotta continue. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I think you want to see this on the plan. Yes, it's up to yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, we only have an IDA. CJ, two weeks, but, okay? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that should be fine. He submits that. I don't think he needs to come back either. Just, no. If, just if you, yeah. Well, I'll send it around to you, and you can let me know if it's adequate, sure. and then. <laughs> Motion to continue is made by Mr. Manzi. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And that's new. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Next one is uh, 575 Turnpike Street. Love it. Right here, 575 Turnpike Street. <laughs> so you all may remember this from when it was actually permitted. Um, there was an order of conditions on this previously. There was wetland replication. I went out there to um, review the filing. The wetland line, I believe, Steve, is taken from the old plan. Yes. Is, uh, there were no new flags out there, but basically the wetland's at the edge of, edge of the parking lot anyway. Um, we did find some issues unrelated to the project, which is repaving and some new stairs and walkways and things. Um, there had been lack of maintenance of the stormwater management system. There had been some um, either plow debris or yard waste debris um, at, the, at the back of the site. So some of these issues have been addressed. The debris was removed. Um, they had the catch basins cleaned, but I went back out there and I can't find the outlets to the catch basins into the wetland, and um, there's a lot of sediment from snow plowing, so I'm assuming that may have something to do with it. And the catch basins don't seem to be draining, some of them, the ones closest to the wetlands anyway. So I, I do think there's some additional work that needs to be done, but it seems to be getting done. These issues didn't get brought up until about a week ago, so I think we could, um, condition this RDA, I'll, I'll let Steve present the project in a minute, to those things get done first, and then you can move forward with your project. But anyway, project to be presented. Mr. Chairman, for the record, my name is Steve Stepinski from Merrimack Engineering. I brought some extra reductions just in case your thing broke down, you know, kind of the old school. <laughs> Which it did. I don't know if you need them. They have, I made copies of your plans, but you, if, Changes, right? no. No. <clears throat> Basically, this Chestnut Green three building complex uh, at Hillside Road and uh, 114. And um, the parking lot is in need of repaving. The cement concrete walkways are in need of reconstruction. So, this is essentially a maintenance project to. Uh, repave the same grade, same location, same amount of paving, no increase. Um, remove and replace the cement concrete walks. A couple of places where I'm going to make the walks smaller and increase the paving to um, uh, pick up some parking spaces. But essentially, it's the same amount of impervious area, no increase. Um, there was a project approved by the planning board at the end of Hillside Road that's outside of the 100 foot buffer to add uh, nine parking spaces at the cul de sac. They're going to do that at the same time. That's pervious pavement. That's how the planning board approved it for site plan. It's outside of your buffer zone. So essentially, um, I'm going to put erosion control in at the edge of existing pavement, and we're going to reclaim the existing pavement and repave it. And um, that's about it. As Jennifer indicated, um, the property manager had, Jim Toscano had um, the catch basins all clean. They, they sweep the site uh, two, sometimes three times a year. Um, so it was already swept. Um, as she indicated, there was sediment in the basins. The basins were cleaned. Subsequently had Rudiman go back they tell me that he jetted them yesterday, but I don't have an invoice and I don't have evidence. And she's, uh, Jennifer found water still in the basin. So it, it, it's going to get done. The pipe is going to get jetted uh, before uh, construction takes place out here. And if we find any catch basins that, um, 
need reconstruction while they're there doing the reclamation will reconstruct the catch basins too. Otherwise, there'll be silt sacks put in the basins um, during the reclamation project. And that's uh, essentially it. I would add that I designed most of the sewer on Turnpike Street 114, and the way that got put in is um, put well points in. There were well points that were put in every 50 to 75 foot. They were pumped down so that the water table was dropped right in front of the sewer. And there was clean, it was clean water that got pumped down out of the well points, so there was no issue. We didn't even need silt pits. But that's how, how the sewer got put in. So just a little history again. The, um, so it's a repaving job, Steve. Are they, are they grinding out? Are they ripping out? All the pavement, go put a new basin, and yeah, that's what the section looks like. Yeah, all the all the pavements going to be reclaimed. So we're going to grind it all up, and whatever excess is going to be going off to the yard, whoever the re reclaimer is, and whatever additional is needed for regrading, that'll stay on site and be used as part of the grading. Okay, but you're taking it all, taking it right to gravel. Right to the gravel base, okay. right. To figure probably a day to grind, a couple of days to grade, and one day to pave. Uh, essentially, and maybe a, week's at, a week project. Yeah, we we figured that the whole thing, I'd have to do it in phases. I mean, a lot of you know, doctor's offices here, so we got to relocate, you know. So there's a lot of coordination. It might end up being a two week project because they'd probably do it in phases phase A and B, one half and then one half. Um, we're also looking at doing it at night. Um, there's a night premium, but um, there's two contractors that were the little bidders that we're talking to, and they're both giving us what the night premium will be. We may do it at night or Saturdays and Sunday. So we can't really get mixed too much on a Sunday, but if we mill it on Friday and pave it on Saturday. So the, um, the discussion on the cul-de-sac, you said on the, the end of Hillside, that's Hillside used to go through. This is at the, the Hillside used 114 to, end. Right. Hillside used to go through, and then um, <coughs> Hillside used to go through, and then it was, uh, because of all the accidents, it was cut off right. and the selectmen uh, abandoned a uh, portion of it. Um, so it's the, there's a cul-de-sac that was built. Actually, the cul-de-sac is on Chestnut Green property, and there was no easement to the town. So everybody's been turning around without having any easement. And the, what was supposed to happen is the county engineers drew a plan. The county, the selectmen were going to take an easement based on the county engineer's plan. And they never took it. And the county engineers went out of business. The, 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 they, got, they had disappeared and it never happened. So we've actually drawn an easement plan. And the owners, the condominium association is going to be giving the town an easement for the cul-de-sac that's on the Chestnut Green property, but it, but that's not being par built as part of this restoration. Yeah, we're, we're gonna yeah. we're gonna build the the pavement. That's it's pervious. It's uh, pervious pavement. It's not impervious, so we have no increase in runoff. We're gonna do it at the same time. Okay, fair enough. And it's uh, it's outside your buffer zone, but so Jen, you had questions about functionality of the existing drainage system and the um, in finding the, the pipe outfalls. Is that even germane to, to this application? Well, it's germane in that it's part, there's an O&M for the uh, old ongoing, order of conditions. So, you know, a lot of these things we don't ever get to look at unless they're back in front of us doing a new project. So I just feel it's important for the drainage system to be functioning before they go ahead and do all this work. The property manager wants to do it. Okay. Clear. So, so yeah. how is it? Do we want to address that? Are we going to well, they, I mean, they, ask them to find them? And we're going to no. We're I mean, they're going to need a pre-construction. They're going to install their erosion controls, and before that's done, it may already be done. I the thing has grown up into a poison ivy nightmare. So I was out there late today, and I wasn't about to go looking for the outfalls again. But I did notice the water was still in the catch basin. So I'm assuming that maybe they didn't get back out there yet, and he doesn't have the invoice because last time they cleaned out the catch basins, I had the invoice. You know, story done. I, I'm just assuming either it hasn't been done yet, or 
maybe there was an issue. I, I don't know. We, neither of us have the answer to that right now. That's why I'm saying before work starts, so, we should get that. On that issue, we could, we'd be satisfied with having that just confirmed before you know, right. during the pre-construction meeting. Okay, I'm all set. Uh, anything else on this project we should be aware of? No, it's way too close to the wetland, but that's beside the point now. No. Um, Just for the record, we, none of us, I think, remember this goal. This, I mean, we've been here a long time, but this is this is a relatively old project. I do think with the dumping, um, it makes sense too to condition wetland markers on the on the existing tree line, just so it's apparent to. They said there's some neighborhood dumping over there too. We can make it apparent to all that this is not not the place to be dumping. Right. Rather than the Conservation markets. I mean, we talked about property manager and I and Dave Ferris, who's the landscaper, talked about putting up a couple of signs that just say uh, no dumping because it's the neighbors that are dumping the grass, the people from Hillside Road coming across the well, street. It's, it's the conservation markers are about more than no dumping. Yeah, okay. You know, it's yeah. identifying yeah. that it's wetland resource yeah. area as well. So, so Steve's, I don't always agree with Steve, but the. the the people who live in the neighborhood who are doing this to begin with don't understand the significance of conservation area. They think it's a perfectly oh, they great are, place. They've actually been in. Some of them may be in the audience. <laughs> there were they did come in and review the plans and did talk about it, but they didn't address the uh, dumping. I'm not saying neighbors in general. The folks who are putting their organic material in the you know conservation area, they may think it's a good thing. So no dumping is to the point. I, I don't are, just. Our wetland markers also say no Maybe. dumping on them. Do they also say no dumping? They do. We have ones that um, we alternate them. They're round that are the old ones. And then we have square ones that we redid with all no dumping, no. I apologize. I haven't seen the new ones. The new ones. Which are probably 10 years old, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. They say yeah. no dumping on them. If they say that, then that's Not in the way that a, you know, big road sign yeah. does, but. Or we could do both. Put up surveillance cameras. Get pictures of them dumping. Just send us the recordings and we'll handle the rest of it. Nice high, high definition video. We'll take care of everything. If you won't have to do a thing, we'll do it all for you. That's all I have to say. Jen, did you review the O&M plan that exists? Yeah, I mean, it's very basic. It requires them to clean out the catch basins. I assume if you don't clean out the catch basins long enough that it clogs your outlet pipe, it means you clean your outlet pipes too. But, you know, I mean, it's just sort of basic stuff. Okay. So does it need to be updated? I don't think as part of this project, because this is an RDA, yeah. but um, does it have, it, is there any, um, as far as snow stockpiling, are there any issues in that regard? Well, the only place they have to snow stockpile, unfortunately, is right along the wetland edge, yeah. just the way the place is designed. There is no other place for it. Well, if the catch basins aren't draining properly, when they go, if, they, if their requirement is to clean out the catch basin, they'll go clean the catch basin up and forget about the rest of it. That's not their job. Right. So, you know, if it's, it's not draining properly, then somebody's got to go in and see why it's not draining. Well, if they jet the drains, that should potentially solve the problem unless they're really blocked at the other end. It's hard to say, but I think that's the proof we're looking for and we haven't gotten it. Yeah. But either way, before anything gets done out there, it's going to be fully functional. That's the goal. Steve, there's no berm or any edge. But it just, it just, just paved right and sheets right off the edge? No, there's curb. No, there's, there's, there is a berm? There is a berm. So it must be draining somewhat, otherwise it'd be standing water in the park. Didn't I, did I pass out the photos? It'd be draining somewhat. I, I went out there, I looked at like, two of the basins, then I went to Tripoli's. So that was my reason for going. But tonight, and there is water there, and I just don't know. You know, those. I think the pipes are kind of shallow, and I couldn't tell. I didn't open the basins. I could see it, though. And I don't know if that's water in the sump or if it's blocked. So I don't think those sumps are very deep, given yeah. how old this is. Yeah, I think they're so like I, I think they're blocked. A couple but foot sumps, but... You know, so I just, I don't know. Yeah, I, I didn't see and it. I didn't hear back today, so, but we'll, they'll get it done. They, they want to do it. They don't want to not do it. I, I heard your original statement. You know, we don't often have an opportunity to go up back to see if the O&M plan is being adhered to. And, uh, when we do, we should. So please do that as our administrator. I, I, I would like to see the outlets on the plan. Well, the outlets can't, I mean, literally the catch basins are like 15 feet from the edge of the wetland, so they must outlet. I right. mean, there's no place for them to outlet but right in front of where they are. It's impossible. That's why I'm saying it, they should be easy to find right. because... 
they're right at the edge of the well. And well, they're not making so I would say. So let me that just because the applicant representatives here. So let's say that we know where they are and that they're inundated. They're mucked in through through thirty years of a you know, accumulation of leaves and debris and stuff that happens in a wetland area. And it's all matted in and silty and this and those pipes are submerged. Are you asking them to dredge those outlets out? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because oh you. these are I mean this this is fragmity you know I I just want to make sure it's clear that you know we we may be giving them permission to alter a wetland to dredge out an opening. There'd be no no problem with that. Okay. They're also you know the the amount like I said the the snow storage sand that's out there all of it it it, it, it could use a cleaning. Hmm. The, I mean, these are now, back in the day, as you know, you know, stormwater management and wetlands often coexisted in their functions. So um, it is what it is, but it isn't something that's going to be overly disturbed by putting a bucket in front of that pipe and dragging some stuff out. I mean, it, I just want to be clear because that's exactly what I was hearing, but it, it, it's contrary to what people would think otherwise, but it's because need, of what they, we've got out there. Right. We are, at, in they fact, asking to. them to expose the outlets and dredge those out those discharge yeah. areas. If you saw the photos, you, it's it's pretty clear what we're dealing with. I don't have anything else to next one. Okay. Uh, so what we need, we don't have to yeah, kill one more. Oh, I'm sorry, What are we going for? We're going for a So it would be a, a negative number three with the pre-construction condition that the stormwater management system, you know, be maintained and functioning. A pre and post construction inspection and the wetland markers. Okay, well just, just so clearly, you have no recommendation for a better way to handle a snow and sand issue out there. I don't, they didn't do an NOI, so I don't think, you know, we can revisit that. There's nothing in the prior order that says they couldn't stockpile snow okay. where they are stockpiling snow. And there isn't any other vegetated surface for them to stockpile. I'm sure they do dread, you know, Push it to the far corners of the parking lot, but there's there's just not a lot of area anywhere out there, and it's a massive parking lot. Hollow as they have, a hollow out. There's only two alternatives. Nothing else you can do. Uh, there, there. We can we condition that the outlets be maintained. It's already conditioned in yeah, the original yeah. O and M. Right? right, it's conditioned in the original O and M, and I'm there not going to. There's an O and M plan on the site. Oh yeah. 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 Very basic, but you know, just the store. I I sent. I, don't, I must have sent you the because conditions. I that's think. what that's what's clogging those outlets is the sand and the salt and right. whatever they have and having to pack them on during the summertime. Yep. And it's all getting pushed over the, over the edge and they're not putting it in the corners and just going in and just blasting. It does. It doesn't look like they've been pushing snow into the wetlands, but certainly that whole little buffer strip of grass between the wetland and the parking lot is where the snow goes. You can see all the sand in the grass. It's just, it's just what's happening. And people park everywhere out there. There's supposed to be travel lanes where you can like travel around the parking lot. You, you can't go, in, you, every lane you go down, you have to back back out of, because they, they park everywhere. It is, it's a hop in place. I, so, motion? So, uh, hold on. So the, it was the, the recommendations as read. Negative number three determination yes. with conditions for operational stormwater management before the start of construction, pre-construction inspection, post-construction inspection, and wetland markers um, every 30 feet along the edge of the, including the ones that say no dumping. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And that's unanimous. Thank you. So the other, um, Steve was here quickly to represent another project where the applicant could not make it, which is 22 Buckland, which is the Meadowwood subdivision. Right you have the as-built plan in your in your packets, if the chair is willing to take it out of order. That's his discretion, I'm sorry. Well, there's 22 Buckland. Uh, Got it. It's pretty closed door, slam dunk, or whatever you want to call it. Is that okay, Lou? Do you want to do it? So 22 Buckland was the uh, 
first like I don't know six nine houses on of the Meadowwood two subdivision. The first half of Buckland, Buckland keeps on going. If that was part of Meadowwood three, mm -hmm. um, this is one. Ha this would be the first house along that within the um, hundred foot buffer to get a partial COC. We've had some that have been out of the buffer zone that have gotten partial COCs. So, um, Mr. Stepinski had a partial. Um, as built in the file, but it didn't have everything that was out there today. Just just so you know, the proposed plan showed no decks, no stairs, no patios, no nothing. So the fact that there are appurtenances out there now, they're very limited, small, nothing, nothing to write home about, a, a brick patio, a small landing outside the door and some stairs down. They're outside the 50 foot no build zone, but I don't think at this point that they require any kind of after the fact modification. There just were no appurtenances shown on the proposed plans back in the day. Um, the house footprint's exactly where it should be. There's now a white vinyl fence that surrounds the property. And um, if anything, that's a good thing. Um, and that's about it. I, I have photos. The property itself, not not any of the structures except for the fence. But don't worry, the next house is right on the yeah, wellin. Yeah, I so. read, read that. Yeah, this was a PRD. This was a PRD at the time. Well, so one of the original plus PRDs. This, yeah. 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 One of the, uh, I think it was the first PRD. The first this, one. This was Donnie we, did it. This was where we were taught what the legal definition of a stone wall is. When someone dumped, pebbles dumped 22 tons of pea stone and called it a stone wall. Oh, really? <laughs> and we had to define a cross section. And so we had to learn the hard way. Okay, <coughs> we have to define exactly what an acceptable stone wall is, and it's not. Pea stone. I don't remember that. One. I remember it. I'll never forget it. Because you were the, there soon. It was one of your. We all there. It was one of your clients, Steve. Was it? But I'm not going to name names because okay. the, the statue of limitations is long. Run. All right. Well, and we have real stone walls out there post that, so <laughs> no Just saying. Just bring it, taking a walk down memory lane for you. We did a compliance site inspection, and they're like three-year-old kids yeah. throwing the wall. That's correct. That's <laughs> side, that's too <laughs> small. Were, that's exactly right. I forgot that. They were picking up the pea stones <laughs> and nailing frogs in the pond. Because we're standing there doing an inspection. They're wiping up. The, they're, the, they're, they're shooting rocks at frogs and turtles, and they said, we got to get out of here. we got to leave right now. <laughs> can't stay. But that was our stone wall. Rocks about that big. Well, anyway, none of those no. rocks are on this site. It's a true, it's a true story. Uh, I don't, I'll get us back to where we are. No questions. Yeah. No questions. Sean? Uh, no questions. Doug? No questions. A uh, motion? It'd be to issue a uh, is it a partial PCOC or a PCOC C? for 22 Buckland. Yeah, we are not giving so Meadowwood to a pass second. yet. No. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And that's unanimous. Thank you. All right, we're back to uh, public hearings. Uh, 190 Dale Street. Do you want these? Yeah, I'll grab those. After the fact, filing for a um, patio. Um, probably been under construction for some time, but. We only found out about it when we were signing off on a building permit for a deck. Um, there's an intermittent stream that runs at the back of the property, which is the only resource area on the site. There really isn't any BVW, just, just the intermittent stream. Um, kind of a funky little stream with some culverts in it, and um, I don't know the history of that area, but um, this project is approximately 70 feet away. and. The applicant's consultants here to present the project. Joe, <coughs> questions? No, no. That, well, oh, I mean, I'm unless sorry. you don't want to hear the presentation. Oh. 
Um, no, no, well, the deck yet. is permeable, and the, and the, and the, the uh, deck is after the fact. Thank you. So we, if he wants to speak. The patio is not complete, by the way. There, it's in progress, so it's. Um, Okay, far away. Uh, good evening, folks. Uh, my name is Bob Prokop uh, from Wetland Consulting Services in Merrimack, Mass. Uh, I was asked back in early May to uh, delineate the wetlands on the site, uh, which turned out to be just a small intermittent stream. Uh, I only flagged the, the I only flagged the wetlands on the side relevant to where the where the where the patio was being built. Um, I use an existing plan, plot plan by from. Uh, uh, who prepared by, who was it, David Terranzio, anyway, uh, thank you. <laughs> and, uh, and once I flagged the wetland, I used the range finder to determine the distance of the, the wetland from, well, to produce the plan as you see it. Um, just as a point, just to be sure, on the plan that you hopefully have, I don't want you to conf confuse the 40,000 square feet, which is in the, which is in the square of the patio. That was the original plan, so, but it is a, uh, as I point out in my report, it's in, uh, what's the dimensions of the, I'll find out one of these days. It is a 22 by 50 foot patio. It's probably, I would say, two thirds to three quarters constructed. Um, so it isn't after the fact. Uh, immediately behind the patio, the patio is a sort of a stockpile area, which I can show you another picture if you'd like to see it. They have your photo. No, but there's another. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mr. Dyer is going to remove all that material. Um, he uses it to stockpile for the for the patio. Um, we're more than willing, I guess, to put up uh, markers if we need to, to show uh, the, any further undisturbed areas. By the way, the area where the, I have not seen the site before the patio was built, but I'm assuming it was probably lawn. Um, and then the area behind the patio, between, uh, between the patio and the uh, intermittent stream, it's kind of a, it's a weedy area. There's not a lot of shrubs growing in there, uh, but it was, you know, previously cut, I would say, a long time ago. So there's not much going on there. So that's kind of it in a nutshell. Can you want to come back? Yeah, please. Um, just actually a question for Jen. Jen, this is an after the fact filing? Yes. And have the after the fact fees been indeed paid? Yes, I, there was a subsequent check, not just the one that was in the RDA. So um, Vera was out today, but I, I'm, I trust that the fees have been paid. The applicant said they've been paid. He, he said he wrote a separate check. I'm, I'm assuming all is good. Okay, just that's all I have. Thank you. Oh, he has his receipt. Excellent. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. That settles that. Um, okay, uh, uh, like I said, uh, the, that's quite a deck. But uh, in patio, you mean? Patio. patio. The deck. Patio. He did patio. install a patio. deck, but Excuse that's much me. smaller. Excuse and it's outside the buffer zone. With the patio? Yeah, the patio. The deck. The, the, the deck. deck. The deck is <laughs> definitely approved. Yeah. They wouldn't even have to file if it wasn't for the patio. Right. Um, but I, I, it's after the fact that's what we go with the commission folks, though. Deb? Oh, Sean? It was before the fact, and you allowed it? Yeah, it's 70 feet away. Okay, no question. Motion? Uh, question. Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you Sorry, have any chilling. concern about the bridge? No, no concern. Okay. No, also. I mean, it's literally, he owns property on both sides of the intermittent stream, so it's yep. just a way to pass over. It's not any kind of, it doesn't have footings or anything. It's a It's a wood bridge okay. over the, over the. I just because I noticed it, I just wanted to ask. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah, Jen, I just want a clarification, too, because at first I looked at the photographs without looking at the dates, and I thought I was looking at what was once forested backyard is now bare, and it's actually just the opposite. Right. 
Well, they, they, no, I think one's got leaf cover, one doesn't. That's the difference between the plans. So the older photo is taken when the, it's leaf off because you can see the patio, but yeah, if you look at the, the more the recent patio. plan, it's you, can see these, the street. you have full vegetation. Five years difference to growth. Yeah. So as far as the, the, the backyards, they're, they're way outside of the 25 no disturb. Is well, no, there, there really isn't a 25 foot no disturb out there. There's some, some brush along the edge of the intermittent stream, but, but not 25 feet of it. It's an old established house as well, right? Right, and the back is sort of, you must mow it every once in a while because there's no woody. Past the patio? Yeah. No, let it grow all year long. Okay, it's, it's sort of brushy, scrubby, but no full blown trees okay. back there. That's why I was saying maybe just posts and markers toward the back of the site at That's the 25. That's exactly where I was going. Is is the patio itself looks like it is the physical barrier? <laughs> no, and there's. I mean, there's yard beyond that. So the 25. Couple markers. That's all I see. Okay. Being us being, being appropriate. And that's it. That's all I had. Okay. Uh, motion. Uh, It'd be a negative number three. Um, with conditions for post construction when complete and the wetland markers on post. So, uh, Second. What distance from the markers? Um, 30 feet, right? I would say on, on the backyard, maybe three, one at each. Um, no, but how far from the stream? Oh, 25 feet is okay. the no disturb zone. Okay, that's all. So it was Sean and Deb motioned? Yes. Yeah. And yes. You, said, you said the fees have been paid? Yes. Yeah, he's got okay. a receipt. So we got a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And that's unanimous. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Um, next one is uh, Ipswich Street and Katuit Street, Columbia Gas. Columbia Gas. On deck. Oh, you didn't do a butter notification, right? Yeah. Um, so, did you submit a waiver request? I know I talked to it. I think we, what did we do? Typically, we, we, we haven't done it in the past where it's along a roadway. Um, it's very difficult to find out who owns the roadway and then all the abutters along it. Um, He's He's right in that, that we didn't. I just didn't know if, if we had them request a, a waiver because it's only a local bylaw requirement, not a Wellness Protection Act requirement for an RDA. I, um, Help me with this. All of it's gas work, public utility, yep. all work within the limits of existing pavement? That's correct. Right, so they are exempt under, under the Act. Under the Wetlands Protection right. Act, but not under the local bylaw. So the question is to waive notification only under our bylaw. Under the local bylaw. There are no RDA requirements for notification anyway. Right. Anyway, yeah. Uh, my name is Dana Altabello. I'm with Merrill Engineers and Land Surveyors. I'm here representing Columbia Gas of Massachusetts. Uh, this RDA has been filed for the proposed replacement of a, an existing bare steel gas line um, with a new HDPE high pressure gas line within uh, portions of Ipswich Street and uh, Katua Street. In total, approximately 810 linear feet of uh, gas, uh, gas pipe will be installed along with service connections to existing houses along the route itself. Um, all work will be done, as you mentioned, within paved uh, roadway areas along their shoulders or within existing maintained grass areas um, along the roadway. Portions of the work will, will take place within the 100-foot buffer uh, zone to a, a bordering vegetated wetland. These wetlands were delineated by Brad Holmes of Environmental Consulting and Restoration in May of 2018. Uh, the gas main replacement work will be done using the open trench method. This involves a contractor only opening the length of trench that can be installed and backfilled in one day. Uh, no stockpiles or open trench will be left overnight. Prior to construction, erosion controls will be installed on the, the limit of work, um, you know, along the length of the pipe itself. Uh, no work will be done during any rain events, and silt sacks will be placed uh, beneath the grade of one catch basin, which was identified uh, um, along the the replacement route itself. Since the work will be done during dry weather uh, within paved roadways or the shoulders, 
uh, with erosion controls installed, installed prior to any construction taking place and the trenches backfilled at the end of each workday, uh, that there should be no impacts to the wetland resource areas during construction. Um, if you have any questions, we'd be happy to answer them. Just one. And that's where you cross Couture Brook in Ipswich Street. There's a culvert beneath Ipswich Street, and it's relatively shallow. So do you go under the brook, over the culvert, or and I'm going to say it facetiously because I know that the gas <laughs> company contractors oftentimes will just punch right through it. Uh, What's no, your intention? <laughs> the intent it? would be to go on top of it if possible. Um, if it's if it's uh, if it's you know close to the surface like that, a lot of times they'll go under it and they will just excavate a trench and they'll dig down below the comp you know expose the culvert itself, feed the, the new gas line below it, cover it with some good clean sand, and then. We're going to want to see that way. detail. Sure, we can get a copy of that for you. That's it. Uh, no questions. Yep. Sean? Um, just out of curiosity, are the abutters notified of, of the project and when it's going to take place? Um, I think Columbia Gas on their own, they just kind of send tags along the abutter. I'm not 100% sure of that, but I believe that's their intention just so there's no inconveniences. They, they, they do the door knock yeah, or hangers or something like that. No other question. No question. Uh, so we, uh, we're going to have to get that for the. For the uh, yeah, I think the, that's the only place where the project could run into a, into a minefield, if you will. We, we really got to know what is the, the the cover from crown of culvert to the to the roadway surface, and is that sufficient for you guys to get your main in that in that envelope? Sure. Rec my recollection, it's pretty it's pretty shallow, so it's almost going to force you to go under it. If it's going under it, we need to know how the heck you're doing it, and, and how you're going to protect it, and dewater it, and and sure. Whatnot. That's that's what we got to see. All right. So we need a most yeah, just for general conditions too. Um, your erosion control is all like and heading towards the wetland. They need to Curl know, up. come sure. back up. That can be a pre-construction. We can see it in the field kind of thing. Sure. And the um, my only other concern was on these projects. We've asked you to designate a stockpile area because I've noticed in the past that. They generally do end up stockpiling some material somewhere, and we just want that somewhere to be outside the buffer zone. Sure, yep. And the catch basins are unprotected. There's only one, but yes. And how long do you anticipate the project to take? Um, they can do anywhere between 80 feet to 300 feet, depending on the conditions out there. Yep. And um, what did you say the total length was? It's 810 linear feet, so uh, there's only about 300 feet within the, the buffer zone, so the, the work within there could be a day or two, I would think, within the buffer zone itself. And just looking at some of the recommendations, um, one, one was uh, additional erosion control at Grafton Lane at 23 of Switch Street. Again, that was just so that their erosion controls don't head toward the wetland. They should head back up so that the, none of the sediment that might follow the erosion control line would get into the wetland. Temporary location of the backfill material storage be outside the 100? Right. And identified all set? Yep. I just asked him to, to, to do that. Some of the gas line is outside the buffer zone. And uh, replacing anything damaged with native plants or seed mix. So th there was something in there that they would replace native vegetation. It's mostly like Virginia creeper and some other things. So we just want to make sure you throw some kind of seed mix in there that's native. That sure. I mean, grass isn't going to take. They'll usually do like a wildlife mix or something. Yeah. The New England wildlife. Um, wildlife restoration mix. Yeah. Or one yeah. of those. <coughs> Second. All the favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. 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 Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Um, do you, well, I guess it depends on the detail, but Joe, do you want them back with the detail to explain? or? Right, he said they, they submitted early enough. We can look at it ahead of time. They need not come back. Okay. If we have questions, we, think we might need them back. If we get it early enough. <laughs> right. Can't, you can't send it the same day. So I know. Two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. Okay. So, so Joe, the detail is going to be guessing on the depth, right? I mean, they're not going to know that information when they do the. I mean, survey. 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 They won't. survey. You're going to go out there and, and they can shoot some grade from the okay. from the roadway and, yeah. and, and the crown of the pipe and yeah. where the floor of the culvert is, and yeah. don't need a full blown survey of the street or anything. But just you know, based on that, they'll be able to determine if they've got an envelope to get that pipe yeah. through. And that's what you're looking for. Is yes. Those. Those. I, 
I say that only because I think they're going under. Only because I think they're going under. Yeah. Now, yes, without naming names, the contractor who currently has the Columbia Gas contract is a butcher. <laughs> and I've seen them fix by, by stuffing T-shirts in them. Yeah. So if, it, if, they're in, if they have to cut through a culvert to have their pipe go straight, we'll they'll cut it. through yeah. the culvert. Gotcha. So I want it to be defined that if they need to go one way over or under, yep. and the over is not possible, it has to be under, not through. Sounds like 4-1 is 4 out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Put a bit of a track record. Uh, just for, 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 for clarification, I guess, on my part. Not necessarily looking for elevations to design up. You're looking for elevations to confirm which way we're going. That's correct. Okay. Correct. Okay, so we don't need to necessarily say that. If you've got, if you've got a sufficient area to go over it, then you need to say that, and that's all we need sure. to say. Okay. If you know that you don't have sufficient area, then you've got to tell us how you're going under it. That's sure. what we need to see. Unless that culvert hasn't been upgraded since I've been on it. That's going to be pretty old. Oh, yeah. Thanks. Oh, it's even older than you, Louie. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm oh, saying. Yeah, I, remember go, I remember hanging out there when I was a kid. Yeah, it was open brook. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know that guy used to own all that property up there. Okay. Um, Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Thank you. Excellent. See you, too. Thanks. He's got baseball on this. That's one. 851 Forest Street, Mr. Yep. 851 Forest Street. 851 Forest Street is the next So this point. is another after-the-fact request for determination of applicability. Um, this is mostly for grading work done beyond the 100-foot buffer zone. So some, thank you. Oh, this, some work was this, done this to um, project. Sorry. remove some tanks on site, and the spoils of that material were graded out over the rest of the site. So the, um, do you have, any, you have those pictures handy? They're all. Oh, you have them? Okay. So the applicant had been warned in his building permit not to work beyond the 100 foot buffer zone because there was no filing. The house and septic system were outside of the 100 foot buffer zone. So um, we have photos. I, I've seen them already. No, they haven't done it. Yeah, they have them over there. Oh. Um, Erosion right. controls were requested and uh, were installed, correct? Yes, yes, that day. Uh, and I, your narrative is not going to be helpful to you. Um, so if you have any questions for the applicant, that would be fine. As, as you've seen the pictures, um, it's not very, not very. They also wish to install some, uh, are they above ground propane tank? <coughs> I see. Yes. Are you seeing yes. Oh. Yeah. Um, it's the same, the same pictures. Well. So I read the summary and I've seen the photographs on here. I guess I can ask some lead questions if that's what you're asking me. Yes. Um, so the disturbance didn't get any closer than 35 feet from the wet one. Is that an accurate statement? Uh, yeah. That I think that was Savannah's been dealing with this, and so that that's her measurement. So okay. So we didn't have a we don't have a 25 foot no disturbance. There is violation. not a 25 We're foot. Fortunate. Out there now, but. Right. Okay. So it's not something we would not have permitted if they had requested it through an NOI in, in advance. Right. Okay. Um, so with that being said, we, we've got erosion control issues to stabilize what's there and contain it. There has been no flow of, or excursion of material. I don't believe so. The site's there. relatively level. So we're really looking at protecting the area. We're regrading it, stabilizing it, revegetating it, and moving on. There correct? were well, I shouldn't say that. There were boulders removed closer to the wetland than the disturbance. Um, that was where Savannah was recommending that some plantings go in. That that was in the 25, I think she said. There's also some debris out there. I think you were working on cleaning that up. Oh, in, that's gone. Yeah, the, the debris area. is gone. Yep. yep. So right. there is one big boulder left, but we're going to put the propane tanks in front of the. The boulder, so that's going to be the wall of the uh, of the propane tanks, and it is, uh, I believe, it's 15 feet from the property line from our neighbor to the propane tanks, and there's a huge boulder in front of those. How far tanks. are they from the wetland? Uh, the propane tanks, they are, I believe, it's close to the 100 feet mark. Okay. So this is coming in as an after the fact RDA. 
And it is it is an RDA because there. It's just land disturbance. I mean. Okay. It's grading, right? Grading. Yeah. Relocation of film material. Relatively, relatively flat back there from the photographs I see. Yeah, I mean they want to keep the grading. So in the yeah. past, the enforcement orders have said get the fill out of there, restore to the natural grade loam and seed. We could have done that under an enforcement order, but they want to keep what they're doing and they want the propane tanks in the hundred, and so that's why it's in front okay. of you as an RDA. Fair enough. I don't. I mean. I don't need to say, but boy, this came really close to being a big problem. But you, but you're below the limit, and you're it's not a big problem. So I'm all set. And my question, Jen, I guess I'm going to ask you first. I usually go to you. You're satisfied with Savannah's delineation of the property, so they had the property delineated prior to okay. doing this work on the house and the septic system because they needed to know where Normally that 100 we foot. review uh, owner delineation so when that satisfied? no when that it was done by a consultant and when it was done I did review it and that's when I told them you know all your work needs to be outside of the hundred or you need to file with us okay. so that that was done ahead of time so, so we have it we have a delineation in place yep. that we're, we have confidence in yep and we have grading that that, well, the grading went down as close as 35 feet, so we don't have a twice. Joe said we don't have a 25 foot violation, so it's a restoration. Well, this, this, I got the sense from Savannah that the stones were in the 25, some of the boulders that you removed were closer than 25 feet because there isn't. Well, that's what I'm asking is there work within the 25 or, or, or not? Because what, what I'm saying is it looks like they're, they're claiming the work got as close as 35 feet on the narrative. If do we have evidence that it got into the 25? The fill, it says the fill material is graded up to 35 feet away from a BVW. Several large boulders were removed from the buffer zone at the time of grading. Applicant is requesting. Um, the only thing I, I get out of that is um, the so wetland the, shrub plantings within the 25-foot buffer in lieu of the removed boulders. So, so apparently, according to the narrative here, the boulders came out of the 25. 25. Okay, so we need restoration there. Right. Okay, and do we want? Do we want some type of a uh, a barrier? Well, I, I'm recommending that because you're you intend to flip this house. You're not living in it, correct? This is yes. going to be sold to somebody else. Uh, intentions, yes. Yes. Okay. So, so we should probably do something to delineate that 25 at so this ju point. I'm just trying to I'm just trying to organize yep. it in my head. So we have work. We have restoration out to the 25 that we need, and. Um, we need monumentation and or a barrier. Monumentation sufficient or do you need more Jeff? Well I'm thinking I'm, wall. I'm thinking I'm thinking a stone wall at the twenty five. Uh, that's what I'm thinking based on the activity and uh, based on the potential for future activity. Um, so the, this, their idea of a stone wall is a dry laid field stone wall, just using, you know, stone on site or whatever you have to to construct a physical yes. barrier. That's that's uh, right now. So or the boulders. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So right now the boulders are along the. I don't think it hit the 25 foot mark personally because there's a line where the 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 de, not debris the loom and the grass di divides up. Sure. That's the 35 mark and the boulders. I don't believe past that mark on when it does a circular. So we just have to be sure that anything is outside of the 25. Your, okay. Your, your stone wall, boulder wall, whatever uh, Jen thinks does is not acceptable hit. has to be outside of the 25. Okay. And uh, that will be protecting the 25 from future. That's a no disturb zone. And uh, that's all I have on that one. Thanks. Sounds Thanks. good. Yeah, just a very small, the 25 foot no disturb from the wetland line is just a small corner of the lot. It, it's not like across the whole Yeah, map. the way the lot is set up is, is kind of strange. A lot of the land belongs to the house behind it. So, yeah, yeah. Their, their portion of the wall would, wouldn't be that big. It's relatively small, yeah. So, sounds cool. Yeah, I, I, I recommend a loose wall, a loose two foot loose stone wall, only because of what's going on. And Jen told us they had a 100 foot buffer and they graded anyways. And if they're turning over this house, so if they leave the lawn all the way to the wetlands or beyond, um, it's not to stop anyone to, to just keep infringing on the, the uh, wetlands. So I think this is a poster child for uh, a loose uh, stone wall. No other additions to that comment. John? Um, the, the, the big boulders, where did they come from? 
They came from the field and the excavation for the septic tank. Gotcha. And um, is it cleared right up to, how close to the wetland is, is, the, is it cleared, Jen? They're saying it's 35 feet. It's cleared. That, that was what Savannah said, the grading yep. went out to about 35 feet yep. from the wetland. But from there, from where it was graded, what's it, what, what is it up to the wetland? Is it just brush? I'd say it's about 20 feet of, of kind of sparse grass, and then you get tree line. And then you get tree line. Okay. Rough tree line. Um, I'm sorry, what's your name for the uh, Will Pierce. Will. From Pierce Construction. Thanks. I don't have any other questions. Doug? No, no, specific questions. Okay. Um, what is your recommendation, Jen? Would be for a negative number three with, um, you know, requirement to reseed the, the area and establish the boulder slash field stone wall at the 25 with wetland markers. Restoration in the 25 as well? For any yeah, I think Savannah recommended a few th shrub Plants, plantings yeah. in the 25. So, in, in markers. Right? Yep. I'll as, move. You move it? Okay. Start, as far as boulder slash field stone wall, I think field stone wall is what we're looking for. Well, I for. think using some of those large boulders, they make either maybe to either end of the wall, because again, this isn't going to be they very They want to do it for aesthetics, great. And then the loose but, stone wall in between. Yeah. I think so, that's what we really want. from my understanding, uh, there is the yard, so the house and the yard, you want a complete wall from uh, around to the driveway or just? No. Nope. No, that's what that was the question. I so just I just asking. along the 25 foot no disturbed zone okay. to the wetland. So yeah, the wetland on your property is yeah. 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 yeah, it'll be an easy one for them. Yeah. Yeah. They can do it. So the wall yes. would, yeah. would, yeah. would, yeah. would wrap like something, I don't know how far down you go, but it, you know, it could do. Okay. We can talk about the location, but it's at the twenty. This would be twenty-five feet, and then their their basic sketch for a, you know is two foot by two foot like dry lane wall, like yeah, farmer's wall, time. middle of the woods, we stone wall, nothing. Okay. You know, not concrete. Yeah. More Sounds good. Okay. Yeah. Doable for sure. It, it'll it'll be you know it, it'll look nice when you're done, and it'll protect the resource area. Sounds good. Very doable. Uh, and so we can recommend some shrub plantings as well. So I'll, I'll, if there's no other questions, I'll move it as recommended. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? And that's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have two continuances. Uh, 242-1728. Request to continue to 627. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And that's unanimous. Next one is 242-1735, uh, 1429 Osgood Street. Request to continue to June 27th. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And that's unanimous. Okay. Uh, let me just write my notes down here. Okay, next one is 242-1736, uh, 195 Olympic Lane. Issue. Second. All those in favor say aye. <laughs> Pardon me? Get a motion and a second to close. Okay. Now. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. And that's unanimous. And next one is 242 1737, the annual road maintenance. Uh, yeah, I won't, I won't spend a lot of time on this one just because they had this. We, we gave them the the roadway maintenance. Since that time, um, the Wetlands Protection Act has gone and um, given minor project status to many of the DPW activities. The local bylaw still includes them, so this would allow them to continue to do that work under the local bylaw, some of it under the, the Wetlands Protection Act, but they have submitted to Natural Heritage and they have 30 days to respond, so I'll start drafting an order, much like the last one, referencing the new documents, and we should be able to issue this, unless you have any comments on. I, have, I, I think it's worked really well so far. I have talked to um, the new director about this, and I've told him that the, the uh, it's worked really well. Joe and I helped, and you organize the, the system. Uh, the paving end is always there. They're always all over. They're right on it. And uh, I explained to him the, the procedures that we have and to keep doing what they're doing 
so we keep it so it's not a you know cluster. So uh, he agreed to uh, stay stay the course. So I, I would strongly recommend uh, going forward. Yeah. So for every project, we get a proposal. They submit it. I review it with the chair or with whoever I think is pertinent to, to the project, and we decide, you know, almost always whether they can be a heard under the general permit or whether they need to come for further permitting. Right. It keeps us from seeing a lot so of really small projects. So mo it would be a motion to continue. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And that's unanimous. Uh, general business, uh, 242 1699, a modif minor modification on one Hill Street RCG on the other. So last fall, they wrapped up the pond outlet structure project close to winter, so there was no time to stabilize the area. So. Um, we agreed they would riprap more of the area than was shown on the plan. Um, you have a plan in front of you that shows what was proposed and then in red what's out there right now. They are going to remove some of that, but some of it they would like to remain. So this is a minor modification to allow some additional riprap to remain and also to approve a planting plan for the top of that slope which I think we have nailed down now. I, yes. I was a little hazy on what the proposal was at first, but I think. Yep. So the, and then the, the one um, the non non-native, non we had just said we would replace that with Carex um, pencil Vanica. Although I don't know that that's going to grow on top of the slope. It's a wetland plant, but. It's a, I was looking at it. I think it should grow. It should be fine. OK. And our, our landscape designer thinks it. So work. it's more of an ornamental than a true sedge. Um, I don't know. I, I mean, I think you can, you can grow it in that. Okay. In that I, area, I didn't so. look at it. What's the point? Carac it's a Carex Pennsylvanica to replace the um, Chasmanthium. <laughs> yeah, the other one was some kind of northern oat grass. I was like, uh. I was surprised because usually he's <laughs> usually he's pretty good about getting the native species. I, I hadn't checked it, so I went through and checked the rest Turns of them. Turns out it's like They're the all okay. south to midwestern plant. But okay. Yeah. I'm sure it was really pretty. Mm hmm. No, he was. I think he was looking at something that would stabilize the bank, and then yeah, I think would it, be able to herbaceous that. plants yeah. that in between the um, the top of the rep rep in the parking area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the the, the myrica that they're going to yeah. plant at the at the along the slope. So we'll pull some of the stone away. We'll plant the pot. We'll pop those plants in. Stabilize the bank. And so you see that we, we submitted the planting plan, and we actually merged that with our new building planting plan with some of the trees that are going into. So you'll see the it's, they're all going to come together. Berry. Right. Um, that's what was confusing when you I was, oh I you looked maybe, at it. Okay. I thought some of those plants were maybe the ornamentals for the okay. building, yeah, and no. I wasn't cause just that, the trees. Yeah, I think it just we were trying to merge them, especially where the the roadway comes, um, because we had two different civil engineers. We had DCI working on the culvert and the bank project, and we have um, CDG working on the, the pond building, so it just made it a little confusing. So rather than have a discrepancy when they came to COC time, I figured the minor modification was the better way to go. Mm -hmm. Planting scheduled to be confirmed and approved by our administrator. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? That's the answer. That was the airport number one of us. Oh, we can know we're open. We're still. Oh, we did buck. Oh, Foster. 42 Foster one Street. One more thing first. 42 Foster. What's that? Oh. Okay. Received. Do you want me to follow uh, Louis? Yeah. All right. What's Lou leaving for the? He's he's take. Uh, he he just had to leave the room, so we're going to um, oh. we're going to continue with the meeting. And uh, two four two one seven one one a COC request for forty two Foster Street. So this was just waiting for final stabilization achieved. Um, recommend closing that we issue the full and final COC. 
No questions. No questions. No questions. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? There being none, no but is present. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And that's unanimous. All right, we will move on to, it looks like we have a series of airport COC requests. Um, is there any reason why we cannot hear them all or do we have to take them one at a time? Well, I think they're all very different projects, but I don't think any of them's going to take any significant amount of time. Randy and I, I see, have already spent. I see a Randy of here. And, uh, just, just don't let me talk. I'll tell you what, Randy. You know, the, you know the rules of engagement here. All you have to do is uh, find find a microphone and introduce yourself to the folks at home, and we'll get this thing going. Evening, Randy Christensen, senior environmental scientist with Stantec, representing Lawrence Airport Commission in the series of COCs you are about to hear. I'm here to answer any questions you have as you peruse them and. Uh, I stand ready to respond. So stay right there. Jen, yep. your so recommendation on 242951. Yep, 951. Um, the only issue was that back when they requested a COC years ago, they didn't have um, topo topographic de detail of yeah. the wetland restoration. The area is clearly wetland, has been. We're on the airport. Airport, uh, so you're out anyway. Right. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, um, so the, when they did the 1432 runway end, they got some of that topo in there. It isn't the full area, but it is clear it's well and it's well in vegetation. There's hydrology, there's soils. I don't know what a little more topographic information in the wetland would get us, so I recommend full and final COC. Okay, I hear a recommendation. Do I hear a motion? So, so moved. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? There being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It is unanimous on 242-951. 242-1087, COC request Airport Industrial Park. It looks like a lot of permitting from the file, but it never happened. Indust the industrial park the at work, the airport. The work did not take Road. place. So um, so an invalid OOC, or invalid, I mean, invalid, it, what is it called? Invalid OOC for work never started. Isn't there another term for work never started, like work never started? That's, it's just, it's just a box. You, a box you it's a box you check on the form. Jesus. All right. Okay. Uh, I, do I hear a motion? Yeah, I move that we make him do the work. <laughs> <laughs> I got my shovel. It's expired. <laughs> That's 52 uh, acres. All right. I no, I, I guess I, I move uh, that we uh, grant the COC request. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? There being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That's unanimous on 242 1087. 242-1347, COC request for the airport vegetation management plan. So we had a lot of data sheets in the file um, of the monitoring that was done, but not the full-blown reports. So um, we ended up with three out of the five years, I think, of reports that we got in photographs. Um, the most recent one having just been done recently, probably the most thorough of all the reports we got. Savannah was most impressed. She was like, wow. <laughs> so anyway, um, the the project occurred um, as far as, you know, vegetation management things go. Um, I guess you deem it a success, although, um, you know, it is veg management. It doesn't look. We were all part it, of the VMP when yeah. we came in here. It was a, it was, it was a big deal, and uh, we put Randy through, through the paces on the VMP. But uh, if you're satisfied that it's stable and complete. Oh, yeah. All right. Any and, questions? And uh, all the things that you required to be out there, you know, from the wildlife habitat features to the wetland markers on fences, all of that had been established long ago. So this is just the final monitoring that was required to close it out. Excellent. Questions? You said we put ready through the ringer on the VMP. There's been more than one VMP out there. A couple have been closed out, right? Uh, no. Uh, there was two VMPs. One of them was uh, denied, and we went for an ESSA superseding order of conditions. Uh, we got that from DEP, but was okay, never that, went to court with you guys. So that's that died on the vine. That's Sutton Street side. Correct. Okay, that, that's what I'm remembering. So, right. Okay, and so we set. deemed that that one didn't need a COC from you because they had a superseding COC. Yep. From so they, DEP. They're done. Anything that supersedes, we're all set with it. Um, this one probably had that, uh, that shrub conversion. Uh, yeah, convert to low growing. Converting from the trees to the low growing yeah. shrub to a, a give a, a greater views to satisfy FAA part number seven. That's correct. Yes, I remember. And there it well. are some. There are a lot of low growing shrubs. I remember. There are. I remember it was it was uh, it was something that we weren't sure would work. Uh, Randy's idea was to wipe out all the tall trees and plant stuff that doesn't grow. Pretty much right. <laughs> 
in a general sense. General, I'm, I'm trying to be general here. We're not getting real specific here, Randy. Fine with the regs, but still satisfy us. Yeah, yeah. satisfy. True. Yeah, satisfied the FAA. That is true. Uh, who? Uh, you're in the butter. You're out. Uh, questions. Questions. No questions. Do I hear a motion? I move to grant CSC request for uh, 1347. Second. Motion NA. Second. 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 All those in favor say aye. Aye. I close and that's unanimous on 1347. 242-1642, a CSC request for runway 1432. So just a couple issues with 1642. There's one gravel riprap slope, which we sort of deem needs to be gravel riprap slope it wasn't proposed it's a small area um, at the as you look out towards Dunkin Donuts it's kind of a slope down to your left but it's way too steep to grow any vegetation on it so they have riprapped it I don't it's it's in a sea of vegetation I'm assuming in a short order it will fill in, fill in. Yeah. Um, shrubs will be growing out of you know things are already growing through it yeah it was a so, thin layer that, that's the only discrepancy. Um, erosion controls have been removed. The only thing that remains to do is um, wetland markers on posts, um, which Randy laid out the locations, but they haven't been dug and put in. Just because Randy comes from a really long distance, I would recommend that you issue the full and final certificate of compliance and I will get confirmation and hand that out when the posts are issued. And just one note on that, wetland markers were installed. Yeah. Contractor put them on T posts. And I said we wanted some not going to move kind of. Got it. He put them on metal stakes. So basically. you can you, you can hold any action we take pending the, the final right punch list. That would be my recommendation. It's just the posts and markers. Joseph, no questions. You don't do we're going to make you build that industrial. Oh, I know. I can see myself out with <laughs> yeah. that shovel right now. No questions. No other questions. I hear no questions. Do I hear a motion? Motion and a second. Who is Any Sean further in? discussion? Yep. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, and that's unanimous on 1642. I believe that completes Lawrence Airport, Randy. Wow. Mr. Chairman, you have you have the con. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. Appreciate Thank it. You. Thanks, Thank Randy. you. Uh, we, we forgot them, but I, not, they're not here anyways. Which one? 1691, did we do that? That, that wants to continue. We wants didn't continue, continue yet. We didn't continue yet. But, so it, but it, they're, they're requesting They want it July 11th. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And that's an end. And I, I recommend we move on yeah. to um, the matter that was added to the agenda, 63 Crossbow. The, uh, he's the only one here for the enforcement order, so I would I would suggest that we speak with him first. Which one now? What are we talking about? So 63 Crossbow, he, he wasn't in attendance when you discussed his shed in um, the beach area on the pond. So you asked that the old, he had filed a small project application for his new shed. Okay. You had asked that he remove his old shed before you would permit his new shed. So he's in the process of doing that, but he wanted to discuss the sand beach area with you, and he had the date of the meeting wrong. So he's here tonight to talk to you. I'm 63 Crossbow Lane. Mm -hmm. um, just an update. The, the shed has been removed. It's been demolished and removed, so that's all done. Uh, again, my understanding is that my request for the new shed going in, it fits all the criteria, so I believe that to be okay as well. It just leaves the, the, the issue of the, uh, the beach head, which is essentially an overgrown sandbox is what it is. It's 24 feet by 22 feet. Right. Um, it's it's sand. It's not fill. I I had seen the the video from the last thing, and there were some some things that were not quite right about it. Um, but essentially, what, what it was was uh, yeah, there were two different beaches on in the neighborhood along the pond prior to my ever putting this in. I only put this in about three or four years ago. And I kind of did it for my grandchildren. Uh, the two beaches were over 100 feet long, and you know no one ever said anything. I presumed everything was okay with that. So. In the meantime, the neighbors had moved and let the beaches go, so they've kind of reverted back to just whatever they were, crabgrass at this point. Um, but I just didn't think anything of it, so I apologize if I've done anything wrong. It's, I just didn't see, I thought I was just the last in line to do it, that's all. And also, the fact that the town has Stevens Pond and has ponds over in, in Harold Parker, I mean, sand goes in the pond, you know, it seems natural to me. I understand from Jennifer, though, that the law had changed somewhere along the line, or uh, I think if I have it right, please correct me if I'm wrong, but that 
after those pieces were put in or something, something had changed with the, the law on that? Is that true? And I had some questions about that as well. We would need more information on that. Yeah. We need, we need some parameters on that. Stevens Pond has a management plan, which so where they did in permit all the, the state beaches on, out in Harrow Park, so they, they've, much to their chagrin, they come before us whenever they do any sort of beach restoration yeah. out there. They did, know. Barry Pond, <coughs> of course. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't think, if you watched our video, if you thought we were you know, casting any accusations in your general direction of doing this here. So no, I just think some things might be misconstrued. That's that, that, yeah, we, that, that's not what we were saying. It, it, you know, it, it's it's tempting, it's it's attractive to do that, and um, but the reality is, it just we just it can't be done, and and that's all we were trying to say. And did we go so far as to say that the sand should be? I don't want to use the word dredge, but dug out. Yes. Dug out. We went. We did go so far as to say that. So you know, the others that revert. The great thing is, if you do leave them alone, nature does take its course, takes some time, but it, it, you know, get other vegetation growing in. Well, I guess what I don't understand is. The pond is sand. The beach was originally sand. So what I do is essentially put it back to its original condition because that is sand. Grass is actually not the thing you want to put by the water. You've got nitrates washing off of that into the pond, choking the pond off and the marine life. Well, That's actually, the last thing you want to do. Actually, the grass acts like a filter, believe it or not. It acts like a level spreader. <laughs> Not even fertilizer. Well, I, he's in, he didn't. He's saying fertilizer, but yeah, it, it, it's uh, we 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 do control the amount of nitrogen that the fertilizer is allowed in resource areas. To we have a regulation for that as well. And that's why generally we have a buffer zone. Around. And that's usually why there's a buffer zone. Yeah. <laughs> does my landscape? Does my landscaper know that? Well, that's that's a question that uh, we wrestle with around here with landscapers. Yeah, but when we're dealing with older established homes that predate. You know, our local bylaw, we try to give a little more flexibility. We look at the, the shed project that came in under the context of itself. But when we see something that's obvious, we, we have to deal with it, which is what we try to do. Well, we're not worried about telling you you have to comply with 25 foot, no disturbing, you know, put vegetation and natural barrier in front of the pond. We're not telling you to do that because we know it's always been that way, uh, has been for, for decades. But, but I, I think what we were looking at was aerial photographs that that did show, and, and, and you're honest, you, you even said in the past few years you've, you've, well, you've had some sand. Get you so far, so. But I, I think that's what we're looking at is that you know, it, it, we, we could see aerial photographs where that plume of sand is, is really expanded out into the water in, in, in recently. And, Thank you. Essentially speaking to what I'm talking about, and the first one is the edge of the sand. You'll see the, the plant life growing up. No plants were ever pulled for this job. They were, that is very natural, and that's what they are. You'll see the second picture I've circled in yellow. That's a sunfish nest. Sunfish just take their, their tails and feather off the silt to expose the sand so they can lay their eggs in the sand. Um, and the third page is actually those, those nests or other nests that are also in there. And if you could, I couldn't get it zoomed up enough, but there was the actually fish. fish in the you middle of You can see the fish. I can see these things from my bathroom second floor window. The, the water is so pure. You know, I, I think I'm the only one who tests the water back there. Uh, last time I had a test, it came in at three colonies per million on the fecal coliform count. I was told that that's just about drinking water. So it's a healthy pond when it gets uh, maintained right. A lot of times the, the outflow clogs up. And I did have a neighbor who was taking care of it himself, God bless him, but he just moved. So I, now we have to call the town, which I just did recently. And they came down and dredged out what the beavers had rot. And, uh, it cleaned it up nice. So I consider myself a custodian of the pond. I just want you to know that it's important. And I do think that the sand is better for the pond than, than the grass. And I'm taking it, well, regardless of that, the builder left it with sand. People put grass on. If you want to bring it back to the original, it should be sand. So, input. Well, 
right on the fence on this one. I, I see the disturbance associated with taking it out, but on the same token, it doesn't belong in there. And, you know, incrementally, if everybody a little bit at a time just pushes it out, you know, the, the pond just over time goes away. It won't be as clean as he's as he's saying. Well, there, there are no there are no set rules for that neighborhood, so, I, and I'm not saying that's right or wrong. It's just saying that that's what is, and I would I would say to the credit, all the neighbors have been really good about taking care of the pond. You know, we all we all make sure that there's no engines on that pond. And once in a while, you see kids come down with their ski doos and want to race around the pond, but so we, what, what we police that as well. To help me better understand what I just said, and, and I don't usually speak without understanding at first, but I want to hear your perspective. So, what would happen if, you were to, if we were to say you have to take all that sand out? What do you think the result would be and how that would be a detriment to, to, to the pond and, and to the edge of your property along the edge of that pond? You know, what, what, what would happen? Well, on a couple of levels, um, on a personal level, we're going to have the geese coming up on the lawn, eating and pooping and eating and pooping and eating and pooping, causing all that, that waste, and which is a problem for the kids. If there's grass there, you're bringing the ticks back in. If you've got muck there, you've got the leeches there. That's just for the human portion of it, and as well as the leech off from the, from the geese, you know, fecal coliform. Um, Relative to what we do with the pond, well, yeah, I guess you'd go through and you'd, you'd dig up the sand to however deep it needs to be, but you're just going to keep hitting muck and sand anyway. So I don't know how far back that has to go. You, depending on what it yeah, is, you may have to. You admit I, I have not been in your backyard or any backyard in this neighborhood. Well, well, I was going to ask, you know, it's very hard for you guys to see from is here. Is this a sandy bottom pond or is this a rocky bottom pond? Nah, it's, rocky, it's right? sand. Oh, well, I mean, you could, I, I, when I've been out there, the, the, the pond's been pretty high, so I haven't seen the bottom. These are the only photos I've seen where the, the pond bottom's evident. Well, you can see it better now because the water did Actually, go down. Louis, yeah, looking at the address, Louie just reminded me of the, the old gravel pit that was out there. So this is. Yeah, Scott Ballinsby had dug it out to. <laughs> right, but up. to your, I mean, I, I'm not saying one way or the other whether, but I mean, if everybody goes adding, you know, this the beach thing is not something we can do further without permitting. Like, people can't just go establishing sand beaches all up and down this shore this is a because they want to. Have either. So, well, plus the other question is the water line. That water line comes up and down quite a bit. How do we establish where the boundary actually is? Well, so, I mean, I, well that's, that's when I was out the there, I dug. We, we did soils. Sizes. We yeah. did soils. I did soils when well, I was in his yard, and we water does not make a wetland. The um, the 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 wetland extends into his grass yard. We we established that it comes up along your fence line there. The the beach area is also fenced but the, in. But the pond was also unnaturally high at the time. It, it doesn't matter. It doesn't change yeah. the soils. Soils okay. is what drives it, as well as vegetation. So there's really three pots that come into it, the water presence of water and how that water moves, what the soils are, then, and, and, and the vegetation cover at, at various elevations. So, you know, the wet one is clear. It's got nothing to do with where the water is all by itself. Um, I guess what I would ask. As passionate as I am to understanding exactly what you're saying, I hate to say it, what we have is a violation of filling in the water and if it was Brooks School, we wouldn't show the comparison. We'd tell them to take it out. And we have. And, and, and we want to be consistent with, with those types of positions. Well, I, I didn't, just to, for the record, I didn't fill into the water, so you know. Well, I really filled on my well, dry property. The water line comes up and down. So the water line in the photos that you saw is over the sand. Yeah, we Which is the because line. the water line is, is extraordinarily high because it was flooding because the beavers had blocked yeah, the bank. So welcome to the the new millennium. We have area of photography that's public public domain that's available out there that we saw a period of at least two two windows of time, if yeah, not three. The file's downstairs if you want it's, me to go grab it. No, no need. Because it was clear and it was clear that you could see the progression of fill over time and and again if it was a if it was a bigger institution, if it was Brook Schools, we would we would be ripping into them and making them do it. And and I think we're trying to I'm trying to be Sympathetic at the same time, stern and saying it has to be done. 
I'd like to hear what everyone else has to say before I. I, I it's clearly, you, you originally said that there was no rules or regulations per, per this pond, but there actually is. Um, any waterway in this town, as obscure or as big as the lake, has regulations that you can't do certain things. Maybe Clearly. I misunderstood. I think Jennifer had mentioned something about something not being established down there or something. Well, we've been when kind we of, over the years, it's been a, a loose It's thing. a wetland re resource area. I just think when the development was built, they were built on a man-made pond, and so the places looked golf course-esque. Everything went right down to the edge of the water. The truth is now, anyone who comes in front of this commission, and you saw a ton of it tonight, gets a 25-foot no-disturb zone. You plant it, you mark it with a wall, you don't touch it anymore. And what the commission is saying is they're not ready to impose that on this particular development. They're not asking you to revegetate the pond edge with natural vegetation, which is technically what they require of everybody else who comes in front of them. They're just telling you that you can't have the beach, that that's not, not something that they can permit for every, anybody else. So, you know, you'd be a special case. And that's just not that's, sustainable that's, that's in a town of 30,000 people. We try and say as consistent as we can. There's a lot of ponds. Um, we had recently yeah, a, a lot, not not too, well, not too far, but it, Chestnut and um, oh, yeah, Hillside. The, yep. And, and uh, they wanted access to this pond. Just to, and they just wanted to cut a grass so they could get to the pond to sit by it or not put a beach. I mean, the photos that I saw, <coughs> you had a fence, you had a fire pit, you had a picnic table. I mean, <coughs> clearly. Nothing of that is permanent, though. It doesn't matter. Clearly a violation. Um, if we allowed everybody in this town to put a beach, a fire pit, a picnic table, and a fence along the waterway, we might just go home and watch TV. That has been going on there for 32 it does, years. It doesn't make it right. Yeah, no, I'm not saying that. You yeah. know, I mean, if I, sh if I went outside and shot heroin with my eyeball, it's still illegal. I mean, that's, it, but if they say it's okay, that doesn't make it right. Well, again, is, is, <coughs> is the, does the law, is it take into account a man-made pond versus a natural pond? The, I guess law that's, does, the law does not. doesn't distinguish. That's so distinguish. how? Once you create a pond, you create a resource area. So if you want a nice little pond in your backyard and you go and dig it, you've just created yourself a resource area. You now have a buffer zone and, and a 50-foot no, you know, no build zone and a 25-foot no. So. No. Right. And if critters make a home out of, out of it, you have a real issue. I'm sorry? If critters like turtles and frogs and... Start right. going in, into that pond and start using well, it. Well, that would actually, I like, like what I provided them better than what the grass would be. Yeah, but no, they. Well, they, I see, I see them walk on it. They seem pretty happy. So, yeah, well, I watch them. I see this every day. They so they seek their easiest route. I'm sorry. They, they seek their easiest route. Maybe well, true. Well, then. Yeah, but uh, I'm, I'm helping <clears> nature. <throat> I, I, unfortunately, I feel for you. I know, I know what you're trying to do, and and and. Uh, well, just the grass doesn't make any sense. Tell me, tell me something other than grass, because. Grass doesn't make any sense. Well, it's a I, pollutant. I'm not sure I'm hearing a distinction between grass and sand. I think what we're, unless I'm missing something, the sand that is in the water can't be. Take it out, take it away. We're not saying you must reestablish your grass all along the beach. beach oh, front. I think that's you, that was what was required at the last meeting because <laughs> the sand was placed there with the fencing. That um, was required. I thought that was. I guess I missed that part completely. Yeah, well, they, they, I apologize. The plan is for them to not to restore, let it regrow back to its natural state, which is which is vegetation. Well, no, the natural state is sand. The natural state of this is sand. They created it. It's sand. The, the that grass was added. Not, not the shoreline. Yeah. Not the shoreline. That's where we have a distinction here. Well, I would I say mean, that it was. Who put the sand on 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 the the loom? On, on my on my grass, I did, yeah. Right. But I did. Aside, sure. If we would put it back to the 25. But before the grass was. In a well. But before the grass was there, it was sand. Exactly. But so, but I I contend that before the grass was there, it was sand, and then they put loam in and grew sand. I I bought that I was two years old, but it was obviously sand. They they had trucks in there driving in there. It was sand all over the place. 
I don't, I don't, um, I can't, uh, I can't disagree with you because I, I was, I wasn't. I just there. think I that Sand built, is the original. I remember trucking out of there, so I don't. Uh, I don't remember. I remember the houses being built, but I don't remember what the shoreline looked like. Um, I mean, we're talking about the size clearly, of a sandbox but here. Clearly, it, it is clearly it's a violation per the bylaw. So, uh, as, as I, compassionate I just, as I'd like to be, I have to be consistent, and, and I think it should go. But that's my personal thing. Deb, well, I wanted to ask Jennifer because I lived out there. I lived on Olympic Lane. Oh, good. And I remember when Scott dug this pond, mm -hmm. and I don't remember any beaches being designated around that area. And I and I remember just grass growing right up to the pond there, and that was it. Uh, I don't know where this so-called beach sand came in. So I don't know, you know, it's, what it's, happened. It's the equivalent of the sand that's in the pond. Okay. And I added it certainly, yeah. but it's. Uh, but but when did J uh, Jennifer? Did you do you remember when these beaches were established? There, I, I did not observe any other beach except for this one along the. There are other violations so along the lake or ponds, but there I, are. This there are no other trust. beaches. Yeah. Because I, I did move in in 1979. I was out there on Olympic Lane, and um, Crossbow was not built then. Right. It was just like Olympic Lane. And I remember Scott had dug this thing up, and all the water came in. This was before our bylaw. But I don't remember any beaches being established around that area. The aerial photos don't show any other beaches currently or, or recently. Well, I don't it, know where the beaches Originally, were. it would be during the construction period that it was sand. And then the so the. There was a, grass there, was added to it yeah, after. There was no My, sand around. There was there was grass up until the. Well, before there was grass, there was sand. It wasn't sand. Uh, there was, had to be. It it that's what this. That's what the soil is. It's the file. Yeah. Here's the file. Um, John, is there actually fencing in the pond? Right up to the edge of the pond. Yeah. The well, the, again, the water. This was early spring, so the water was high. Yep. Well, yeah, and, that's, and the outflow was clogged, so combination of the two. So I don't, I don't have any questions, but I, I mean, I totally agree with the sentiment of my board yeah, members it here. Seems, it seems to go off. Yeah, I, I agree with the sentiment of my board members that. Uh, well, you notice there's a couple of docks in the pond as well. Am I okay to put docks so, in? Hold on one sec, just to finish my thoughts. Sure, sure, I'm sorry. So, um, yeah, I agree with my board members in that uh, I, I don't think this is allowable and it. it we have to revert it back to the way that it should be. What the best way to do that? I don't know. As much as uh, as much as I hear Lou say, you know, if we let you keep this, people are going to come front of come in front of us and have the same expectation for them. I say that's that's a glass half full approach. People are going to when we have when we make you move this, they're going to say you didn't make that guy go ahead and, and revert the 25 foot back up, and they're going to come in front of us and try to give us a hard time about that. So, um, I think. The opportunity to remove it without having to put a buffer zone or barrier in there is really a good opportunity for you, from my perspective. Doug? Yeah, it, you know, it appears to me that this has been pushed out into the pond, the sand pushed out further than some of the abutting properties. It, it was dry at the time, so yeah. And, and it, uh, it's not much, though. No, I mean, not here, even beyond the water that's shown in there. There's been stuff pushed out further it shows in your pictures here that goes out further You're saying under the water, the water. in a lot closer under the water to yes the abutting properties yeah yeah it, well it was dry when that was put in plus the, i recognize the matter of fitness and i and i think we're all unified specific to this project of what is necessary Incredibly and our, our enforcement <laughs> order is what it is mm -hmm. our our, um, our action is what it is um i'd go so far as if you could just craft up uh an informational letter just to mail out a bulk mail just to the neighbors around the pond and just say look you know, we've got a recent issue and uh, be aware anything you do along that waterway is required to have a permit and and, and it we if you're doing it now we're, we're telling you to stop doing it because uh, we are going to be enforcing it in the future well then prior to that having that not having ever been sent out why does mine have to be the test case? Not the test like, case. I'm as I say, as a matter of fairness, uh, uh, you know, what happens is if someone else is going to need a permit for something else in the future to come in, it's going to come before 
a, a committee that we not this committee, but you know, at staff level, if somebody has to sign off on the permit, and they're going to find out just like we found out about the shed. There's an issue, and then we we'll have to wrestle with it all over again. So it just be a full one is. But, but if notice is given, cliche. <laughs> right, full one. You're right. Full one is four hundred. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> cliche. Well, I always get that backwards, but. Uh, then you know, if I've not been for one, then how can you know? How can I expect that? Well, but if you right. So send something out. Oh, right, I but if you, they're, they're being right forewarned, there it's it's not just saying you know, what what you may do in the future requires permitting. It is saying that, but it's also saying if you have violations on your property, be aware that if we come to your property, you will be fixing them. I mean, it's not like anybody's going to get away with anything. The same happens to anybody else who brings me out. The, the, we had earlier tonight the 190 Dale Street. The guy brought me out because he wanted to add a new deck. Well, he already had a huge patio. <laughs> like, he had to re-permit that, that structure. He could permit that structure because he was outside of the 50-foot no disturb zone. Mm -hmm. You're not outside of the subzones to be able to do what you have. So he could permit his. You can't permit yours. You have to remove yours is what they're, they're telling like, you. Like, like Jen says, we, we've, we've had people move sheds. <clears throat> Excuse me, we've had people uh, re-delineate wetlands that they've chopped down and make lawns out of it. We've made them tear, put walls up. I mean, major expense. I mean, you're, you're getting off, like uh, this is Mr. Relatively McDonough. Simple I, I, like Mr. McDonough said, you're getting off easy. I think the key here is what, what we want you to understand is if you came before us, if you had never done this work, and you came before us and asked us for a permit, we would deny it. Mm -hmm. It's not a permittable project. Yeah. to start with. So we can't allow the continued existence of a non-permittable project. We just can't. As much as we all would love to be able to tell you, hey, you know, have at it, you know, we, I, I feel bad for you too, I do. But it's, it's just you went a little beyond the scope of what's permittable. Okay. So, so no one wants to come down and see the bond as it is. No, we have plenty of fair. No, no. 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 Okay. Thank you for thank you for offering. But and and you want to go with grass instead of sand because well, you feel it's safe. We're gonna. Um, we we have there's one of two options. Either Jennifer can work with you on a restoration plan, or if you want, you have the option to hire a consultant to put together a restoration pr plan to submit to us. The yep. enforcement order only required him to remove the sand and revegetate the area. We didn't specify what he needed to revegetate the area with. If you'd like to plant it with shrubs and provide some wildlife cover, that's fine. But we didn't specify what he needed to replant it with. The fence would be coming down. Well, let me ask about that. The fences and the wooden fence. I don't understand the problem with the fence. That's far enough away. It's a. It is in the 25 foot no disturb zone. No alteration of any kind is allowed 25 feet from the edge of the pond. I think it's far enough back. It's in the pond. Oh, you talking about the green? The fence around the 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 beach. The green. I don't know what it is. Yeah, that's what she's talking about. You've got the picnic table. She's talking about the green fence. there's two different fences and stuff like that. There's two different fences. Yeah, they're not talking. There's a seat of fence up closer to the house. That's not what they're talking about. The one that's in the water. The one that's in the water. The green? It's in the water. Whatever's in the water. Well, again, the water has come up high, so it's around my fence. But you're, but you're, you're okay, in the no, 25, no. regardless. All right, so, so all of my neighbors have to take their fences down there. We'll, we'll, we'll do this one at a time. Um, you're, you're in front should of I, the Should right. I sound the alarm? Yeah, well, yeah, well if you want to throw your neighbors if, under the bus, feel if, free. If you, listen, no, if, I, I don't think I'm throwing my neighbors under the bus. To, I was the last one to put a fence up. If you want to, if you want to uh, advise your neighbors, yeah, the green, um, the green, sure. Rabbit fence is what it's called. <laughs> No, that's, no, that's up. We have to. We have to. We have to. Yeah, yeah, we have to wrap this up. We, yeah. Th this, th we can't. It is what it is. I, I don't know what's so, so, here. So, the rabbit fence is, is around. This is on the other side of the big It's right there. So, what I would recommend is we give him the option of either complying with Jen's order or hiring his own consultant to come in front of us with a plan. Give him that one or two. Either hire your own guy, spend your own money, or do what Jen says. But let's. let's. All right, so. I'll let my neighbors know. And last, last question is, on these photos and your photos, yeah. you'll see that there are docks going into the water. Yeah. Am I allowed to put a dock into the water? We no. Don't, first of all, we don't give dock permits. Yes, okay. we do. Oh, we do? Since when? Yes, but. <laughs> first, you have to get the, was it? Chapter 91. Six, if, you, if, you, if you put a dock into, a permanent dock into a navigable waterway, you need a Chapter 191 license. Okay. That being said, 
you also have to put posts and pilings, which are going to alter what is called land under water body, your right. jurisdiction. But they okay. need the Chapter 91 license first. We won't even consider it. Right. So if, if it's a wanna, navigable waterway. If you want to build a dock, to get, get your license and then come in front of us. Yeah, like this, but what? this doesn't require Chapter 91 because it's a non-navigable body of water. Well, this is navigable. That's right. Yes. No, it's not navigable. No. I, I, I'm not no going to get into it. We're, it requires permitting. If you're going to put in a dock, you're going to alter the land which you anchor the dock to, and you're going to put posts and, and so, things so in So we, 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 uh, we desire to move this thing along. We uh, we're all in consensus. We want to move this thing along. So we already issued the enforcement order. So you he was arguing against order, the enforcement and order. We would ask that you either comply with the enforcement order, or if you want to hire your own consultant to come in and uh, submit a plan to Jen yeah. for, for restoration. That's up to you if you want to spend that money. But I wouldn't. If it was me, I wouldn't waste my money. Grass is cheap. So uh, please, uh, any questions? Just stay in touch with Jen, and she'll give you guidance. Okay. Thanks very much for your consideration. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming I, in. I here. do want to say he um, mentioned his small project permit. You held up the small project permit, waiting for the removal of the other shed. Since that shed has been removed, can we authorize the construction of his new shed under a small project permit outside of the 50-foot no-build zone? Has it been substantiated? Sub yes. Yeah. Well, I haven't substantiated that the shed's gone, but I'm not going to sign his building permit until I go out and see it. And I don't think he came here tonight to. I, I see no reason why we yeah, can't. We're not going to we, hold, we, we we, yeah. hold him hostage. We oh. can we can permit the shed. Okay. So, you're, um, do you want to vote to well, issue the small project just, permit? Just, and I don't want to make this go on any longer than we have to. But is that against our protocol to go ahead and, and grant any kind of permit when there's a, a no violation. violation? I agree. I well, agree. I think we have. I think I heard you say you were going to comply with the enforcement order. Yeah. I, I thought I heard him say that. I, I would hesitate to. I understand what you're saying, but okay. Well, just if we do that, the only teeth we have left are fines. Well, we have a lot more than that. <laughs> right. What I'm saying is, we weren't going to permit the new shed until he removed the old shed, which was in violation. No, that, I understand that. Okay. But I'm just saying we have a existing violation. But he's violation talking about out also there. the He's talking about the restoration of the beachhead. Yeah, we have an yeah. existing violation. You're willing to grant a small okay. project, I, right? I'm just so on your yeah. own point, but I, I, I think we wrestled with that at the last meeting. I, I got no. I, problem. I don't recall wrestling with it to tell you the truth. I don't think we yeah. analyzed it to tell no, you the truth. No, I think I, we just stopped at the beach and we didn't go any further. Be done. I'm, 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 I have no problem with uh, showing uh, him some good faith and letting him. Do it if every if you guys are okay. Okay. I just that. don't want to find us in the position where he has a new shed there and the he's not ref, he's his refusal to do anything to that. Well, that's land. So that, that's when things get ugly. Okay. Oh, I uh, doubt it. I we'll do. avoid that, right? That's what I do. Okay. Thank um, you. But just to be clear, I need to take up that whole rabbit fence. It's to keep the geese off the lawn. So yeah, it's I'm going to expose my lawn again to geese off for yeah. the whole 150 feet of it. No, just and so aren't my neighbors at that put, point as well. The, uh, just rent, rent a with, coyote. Put the, the fence where, uh, where uh, to be compliant. I, I, geez, I, I just, what can I say? I disagree, but thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you. Um, I, 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 hold, hold on. Yeah. So what are we doing? I, I, I'm agreeing with Sean. I don't think we should issue any permits until the violation Well, the enforcement order says the NACC took no action on the small project permit for the new shed, but we'll put it back on the agenda when the required work has been completed. So what they're saying is do the work, and then they'll permit the new shed. Okay. That's what you said last time. Okay. That's, so I guess that's. It in. that's like I said, I don't have any memory tying it to just removal of a shed. We, we or never did that. Yeah, that would be we really. Never, so fix the beach. Yeah, and then, and then we'll sign. And then we'll, then we'll sign the permit. I'm just gonna rake the rake the sand up and plant that grass seed. It'll you know, grow just like it did put, before, You don't so. have to even put grass seed. Let 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 the uh, weeds and the, and the brush take over. Like no, no, well, grass seed be quicker. That's all. Keeps the muck down. That's all you need. Okay. Right, thanks. Thank you. I thank you. Thank you. Uh, I would I would strongly suggest you going out there, so you, that he knows what what to do. Or yeah, somebody. We, we we've talked many times. Okay. I, we're we're good. All right. Savannah will go out there. We definitely communicate. Well, Savannah, one day. Yeah. We'll send thank Savannah. We'll send Savannah. Thank you. All right. Thanks thank very you. much. Appreciate um, your time. Twenty-five uh, Hollow Tree Lane. Greg did his monitoring report. This was to see if um, any additional trees should be planted at this time. Um, regeneration was good. I don't recommend any additional planting. I think we can table this matter until we get the next monitoring report, which will be sometime in the fall. So move. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. And that's unanimous. Um, 487 Winter Street. You asked that back 
we issued the EO in February. We required the plan by March 28th. And then I was gone to Japan. You had a meeting. And you granted them an extension to this meeting. I have not heard a word from anybody out there. So um, I don't should I reissue the enforcement order with some new Refresh dates? my memory. This, this is the 487 went to resist the neighbor. That yeah. on the on he Winter was, Street. Ill. The rest he's of the Ill. violation was on Hollow Tree. Um, you you had provided that recommendation on the extension. So. There were three properties affected. Yeah. Two have come in. This is the one who just hasn't even responded. Well, it helps. for there's, reasons. There's, there's, there's special circumstances here. Um, mm -hmm. So. Do you want to continue the next meeting, and you can then advise me when we should continue? Well, I'm two? just thinking maybe somebody from our office could take a ride out and knock on the door. Okay, we can start there. Um, no, we're doing it. I I think you should enforce the. Uh, we should continue the enforcement until the next meeting. We we were granting courtesy because of for health reasons. So we're going to give them another two so, weeks. So I, I see no reason to go. But so anybody who found out about can we not make contact again to find out where things stand no I think you make should. a call send a letter or drive to the house and knock on the door okay. make con I'm saying make contact and see what's the status and we'll see, what's, see what's going we'll on we'll continue the enforcement on until next meeting that, that's my recommendation that's my okay. opinion that so continuing to three I mean six twenty seven for us to make contact please got it so they'll give you two weeks, of, and then you should have hopefully have some input, and then we'll decide what we're going to do with this enforcement. Right. Because it's unfortunate that due to health, personal, whatever the personal Right, but someone is, did authorize tree clearing. we can't keep this going on Right, forever. someone did authorize tree clearing on that <laughs> lot, and everybody else has had to address it. And there are concerns from the neighboring properties that someone's getting away with something, which I've assured them that they're not. You know, I, I, would, I would, all due respect, I would take those concerns and shove them. Gotcha. Okay? I'm not concerned about their concerns. Okay. Well, the violation. They should be worried about their own AOs right. and not be concerned about anything else. So everybody I'll be else happy is to, addressing I'll be happy to deliver else. that message to anybody you want personally. Okay. So next one, 851 Forest Street, is just confirmation. That was the guy who was in front of you tonight. So I just recommend that you confirm the EO. We'll release it when he's done everything he's said he's going to do. Motion. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 That's unanimous. So 325 Great Pond Road's an interesting one. Um, DPW reported brush dumping in the at the corner of Great Pond Road and Great Pond Road. Or Great Pond Road by Marble Leland's Ridge. makes Great the Pond left. Marble Ridge. Well, yeah, a right to Marble Ridge, but left you stay on Great Pond Road. Yep. Yeah. So it's the house at the corner of Castlemere, not the one with the pond. Um, right. So DPW reported brush dumping in the wetland that we own. There's a conservation restriction on it. There's also a drainage easement there. Um, we sent the letter based on the DPW report. They had photos, et cetera. We confirmed that the dumping was there, and we just sent the standard letter saying get the, get the dump, you know, get the stuff out of the wetland. Um, Savannah yeah, yeah, so. met with the individual out there, at which point he told her all kinds of things about you know, he wasn't taking that out of there and she should get a real job. Um, wow. Yeah. He since has sent a letter saying, you know, he did maintenance of the island and he's taken the, the recent dumping out, but he's not taking the old dumping out. And That's we should have knocked on his door and, and done this the old fashioned way rather than sending him this nasty enforcement letter. So, so did you give him a, a deadline to comply? He took out again the newer stuff. There's older dumping there. Yeah, yeah I gotcha. So did you give him a deadline? How long does he live there? I mean, is he responsible for all the stuff that's in there? Who knows? I, I don't know. That's what I'm I saying. Think, I, I, bet, I don't think that house was sold in 20 years. No, I don't. I think he's probably the. He is the original, okay. or at least a very. Did he apologize to Savannah? Of course. No, no. The letter came instead. What's the homeowner's last name? It's on there. Um, Belco. Belco. Oh, I'm Belco sorry. You're and right Rush. 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 Oh, good. I don't feel so bad. Oh, that's right. I don't have my. I don't. I have the violation. I don't. I too many. Too much stuff in front of you. So I recommend you confirm the enforcement order if you want me to require additional removal of material. I can yes. do that as well. Yes. Oh, I see it. So, uh, yes, and uh, do I hear a motion? So, move. 
motion. Um, well, hold on. You're looking for confirmation of the enforcement order or ratification of the enforcement order. What do you want? Yep. And then if you want any additional action. So you want it ratified or do you want it amended? What, 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 are, you, what are you looking for? Well, ratified first, that we issued it appropriately. But then if you want me to send something additional requiring that right. addressing his letter okay, to so us. We'll ratify first. Okay, we got a motion to ratify. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll move it. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And that's unanimous. And then what do you put you? On, on, the, on, the, on the enforcement order that we just ratified, is there a, a, a date certain for compliance? Yes. Um, but like I said, he claims he took out the new material and that's all he's going to do. Okay, but you want more than that done? I haven't been out to see it. I, I only know what I've heard. I'm sure, you do, know. Do you want to reinspect before we issue a second sure. a subsequent enforcement order? I okay. Mean, it, it, it's Better. up to you. If you'd like to reinspect and I think it's more defensible. Because we can't give an enforcement order if it's been claimed. You said he sent the letter? Yes. I, I don't see it I, here in that package. It, we have the I, letter to him. We don't have. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't <coughs> have a chance to make copies today. What, did it, uh, what, was the, what was the general statement in it? It was basically in defense of all he's done for the area around there and that he was going to stop doing the things he was doing and that. Um, he didn't deny the action. That so we should no, no, no. So he what you're not. saying is we should issue the letter. So, so I, I just reinspect it. Okay, yeah. I will. And if I if we do bring it back, I'll make copies of the letter. Yeah, please. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, All right. Uh, what? So the last is the uh, is the Olympic Lane order of conditions decision. Um, appointment of chair and vice chair. Are you ready for that? Yeah, Do you guys have the order? Yep. Okay. We have it. So this was for the um, addition in the riverfront. Next to the Leland. So uh, this is Leland. Could be. Condition 32 just notes that they are only the increase in square footage in riverfront is only 211 square feet. They own it all. Um. We said the applicant will move the existing unpermitted chain link fence away from the wetland resource area <coughs> and relocate it farther from the wetland behind so the line decisions. of evergreen shrubs. Only decision. That was the one requirement that we had that they get that fence out of the, off the wetland line and yep. mm -hmm. create a no disturb zone. I think everything else is pretty standard. I mean, this project is occurring on the other side of the house, yep. so I, I think. You know, they're all the standard conditions for erosion control. Um, bond is set at 1500. Um, I think I think we should. We do have the as built foundation condition and then just our standard post construction conditions. I mean, I hate to be a pain, but I, I, I think the bond, the bond should be more with that fence. That fence is pretty, is in the wetlands for 1500 bucks. They might leave it there. Um, um, well, they're not going to get to. They're not going to get what? They're not going to get to build their addition if they. They're going to not get the COC. Right. But they're going to they're going to get to put the addition up. Well, why? Why is, is that a pre-construction condition? We can make it a pre-construction condition. Just make it a pre-construction condition. They're, they're going to get a COC. Building inspector has 30 days to issue it once he gets a... In one oh, certificate hold. of occupancy, you mean, yeah. not a COC. I mean, you said CO, didn't you? No, you didn't COC. COC. Oh, COC from us. Why don't we why make... You just, they, they they'll just why, leave why, it there. Why, why don't we make... The, us. Why don't we make removal of the fence a pre-construction condition? Okay. Brilliant. Okay, done. Because that, that's pretty uh, flagrant. Got it. So nothing happens until that's gone. Yep. That's no, not gone. Moved. Yeah. Oh, gradient. Yeah. Yeah. Out of, okay. Get it out of the wetlands. Sure. Sure. Eighty-six. Eighty-six. Ninety-nine. What do we? Uh, <laughs> where are we gonna? What do we agree to move the fence to? 
behind the row of evergreen shrubs that's on the property. So that's out of the, is it out of the, at least It's out not of out of the no disturb zone, but there was no no disturb zone on this property previously. Okay. The prior yeah. owners had done additional clearing, but. Oh, we'll come up with a good line that may yeah, yeah. it up to you. Yeah. It's moving about 15 feet away. Okay, any questions? Motion. I move that we grant the COC request for 242-1736-195 Olympic Lane as drafted and amended. Sorry, COC request. Good point. I, uh, as the, uh, we grant the order of conditions as drafted and okay. amended. And amended. Don't want to get ahead of ourselves. Right. Yeah. Just jumping ahead two years. Second. <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Adjourned and that's unanimous. And okay. the last order of business is the appointment of the chair and the vice chair. I most respectfully nominate Lou to remain as chair of this commission. It's done a fabulous job. Why would we change a damn thing? Don't change the horse in the is middle of the race. Second? Second. Oh, excuse me, that second. second. That, that was a second. You heard a second. Uh, since I made the nomination, I'll call the vote. Any discussion on this? I hear none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That's unanimous. You're reelected. Congratulations, kid. Sorry. Thank you. And uh, you know, as close to running against you. Yes. <laughs> you can have it. I don't think he was this close. The wave of popularity going in your favor, and I decided not to. You thought the important <laughs> Park would be too controversial. Somebody asked me, do you want this? You, you have a, my, my brother asked me to use it. I said, no. You got to have it, though. Got to have it. You got to have it. The, says, one, the one time Joe Lynch used it, he slammed it down so hard that the head went flying off into the audience and almost killed someone. Howard had that mounted on my plaque. <laughs> <laughs> he, <laughs> he took the gavel, he smashed it down, and the thing went launching off and into the sunset. Well, I have to nominate my vice chair, and I would gladly uh, accept uh, the nomination of Mr. Manzi as my vice chair. Second. Any discussion? Boy, we could discuss that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, but wait, I got the wait, criminal. Hold on, Sean. I still got those pictures yeah. I'm holding back. <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And that's unanimous. Uh, motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And that's unanimous. Second.